if we will like kanchanda rakesh if clear people can join on time i think nobody should wait for somebody ami kanchanda ke eto beshi meeting e dekhi ni age okay so we are live we can start okay uh, good morning everybody uh, on behalf of west bengal orthopedic association we are conducting this uh, pg crash course for the um, outgoing pgts uh, as a crash course to prepare for their exam uh, to start with i first request our honorable president dr kanchan marchal uh, sir to say a few words sir good morning everybody good morning as fully to pgts the bright eyed and bushy tailed youngsters who will be stepping to the Of the big forum very soon. Uh, it was a wonderful exercise having nine hours of PG crash course with the theory and the practicals, giving them an insight of how to face the examinations. And I think that this platform is very really easier for you to be able to comfort of your home and not be overburdened by the nine hours of thought, but broken down in three different slides. Uh, I think the The curriculum has been laid out in a way which is easy for everybody to assimilate, and I think as the as the day goes on, you find it easier to communicate and ask questions if you have. I invite Rajiv Raman to come on and conduct the school sponsored by the can be the first talk with the Kanchan Park the Kumari Park. Sound problem, I see. okay uh, thank you thank you sir uh, so uh, next i will uh, invite our honorable secretary dr partho sharathi sarkar to say few words good morning sir it is a really a proud privilege to welcome you all on behalf of west bengal <clears throat> orthopedic association in this pg crash course this course is usually meant for our juniors who are uh, outgoing batch and this is really wonderful and we have last previous years experience that we have a great attendance and we have a great meeting in this hours and it is really i must thank our scientific committee and also the convener our somodhi dotto and uh, dr sunith hajra and also our webinar dr arno karmakar and scientific team dr rajib raman and dr sobhosin satcha they are really, really doing a great job and i will not take much time this i will request somodhi please carry on the program yes somodip okay i have with us uh, um, our um, past president dilip mojumdar sir so yeah. sir please say few words for the students for the exam and how they prepare a uh, few words in short yeah outgoing uh, welcome to the all outgoing students and uh, to this forum of uh, this grass course this crash course will give you some idea it cannot give the whole idea about the exam and the, and the activities in the exam the exam actually has got three parts first part in the examination is actually you have to go for the clinical examination part of the short cases and the long cases then uh, they have to go for the uh, system the part examination of the of the parts and then four examiners will take into account of their progress of three years learning there and the third part is actually the direct interaction in the table so there are five items there so we go on accordingly and not to be afraid of because the examination is being planned to actually to help the students not to hurt the students so don't worry about there are seasoned examiners we have planned for the examination of the university there are seasoned examiners coming from our uh, our city and also from outside some of them they are seasoned examiners so don't worry about they have come to help you you learn a lot and one thing that i may must tell you is the everybody will remember the day of the examination till their till the end of their life i tell you so remember should be prepared for that and welcome and i will, I will give you the moral support and the courage to actually crack the exam thank you very much and this program will start because a lot we have actually running short of time five minutes already late thank you very much the organizers and rajiv ramon and all thank you 
our new president is very dynamic and has been arranging all these things all throughout his tenure thank you very much thank you and thank you dilip majumdar sir uh, now i request our vice president dr rakesh rajput to say a few words rajput sir sir unmute korun sir very delighted to be on this course uh, and i have to confess this is my first course um, i didn't have these things even during my uh, ms days and uh, after that i've never been involved so much with teaching so i i think i actually uh, hope to learn a lot as to how to teach <laughs> so uh, welcome all and that's all i have to say thank you okay thank you sir uh, next i uh, invite uh, doc, our um, uh, dr sharanendu samant our very own our favorite so sir few words for the pgts no no every i think for last 4 5 years for the outgoing batch those who are already been for the theory exam we are physically we are organizing this course in the wb office i think the main people like rajib then shuni uh, somodeep and partho sanjay kumar they have given tremendous load and including ornob these people are real gem in the in the wba office and as because of the corona times we have not been able to organize this for the uh, physical meet uh, so that we can't have the proper uh, patient sort of or the, we can't demonstrate the exams how it, it can be done so that rajib also requested i think most of the uh the presenters to include some videos so that we can interact we can tell you and explain what are the tests that you are supposed to do okay so i wish all the best for all next three days i think we must go on with the scientific ball so draw all uh, start again with the scientific agenda thank you uh, thank you sir uh, so last uh, word uh, from our course uh, chairperson dr sanjay kumar sanjay kumar sir sanjay da please Uh, good morning good morning thank you sonanuda for uh, this compliment uh, this course is designed in such a way uh, that all aspects of practical examination of ms orthopedics is covered i know all of you are very good students and this is to assure you the examiner which you will be getting in the exam they will be also there to help you ah your written exam is over by yesterday i think you all must have done good and you have attended all the questions ah so very my good wishes for this coming course which will go for three days i must thank dr sunit and somodeep ah uh, for taking and uh, rajiv also Uh, for taking so uh, so much of pain and design this course in such a beautiful manner and assemble all sorts of galaxy stars your teachers uh, who will be taking your class all the best once again focus in this course and you will be helped in very good way thank you thank you sanjay da so we are already 10:15 so i think without uh, wasting much time him i will hand over the mic to dr rajib raman to moderate the session and uh, to uh, start the academic proceeding rajib da thank you somodeep and uh, sunita for wonderful academic program you have made and thanks to wba for giving me this responsibility to conduct the first virtual postgraduate crash course so without wasting time we will start our first uh, uh, presentation with professor ak pal sir we know him he is an excellent teacher excellent orator and the i have been his student i was privileged to be his student in pardwan medical college ak pal sir good morning can i share my screen yes sir please sir <coughs> so sir so good morning the de de delegates uh, honor uh, honors uh, secretary and uh, president of wboa so i am here i am honored to have the first speaker of this uh, pg crash course <coughs> <coughs> welcome to all uh, so uh, without waste 
without wasting any time so we'll start the, our uh, course beloved students so the, we this is the class this is not the class this is not the class for passing the examination but to gather the knowledge to diagnose this is most important we are here to exercise our mind we just synchronize our mind heart and also hand so that is why we are orthopedicians so without wasting delay we can start and the highlight of our my uh, presentation should be to exercise our clinical eye this is most important we should not uh, discuss about much more the theoretical aspect much more technical aspect because there are several other podiums are there several other uh, scopes are there but to exercise your clinical knowledge is extremely important not only to pass the examination but also to diagnose the exact uh, uh, disease so that we can cater the society better so this is uh, without these words i just i start my case and i can ask my student uh, dr rohit Uh, to <clears throat> to uh, contribute so that uh, he will take up uh, when that I I can ask any questions or not. Okay, and any other third year student also, if it is that they are present, they can interact. They can stop me. They can ask any questions. I I am love to answer this. Okay, so uh, this is a history. This is a fourteen years old girl presented with limping for last six months with shortening of the left lower limb. limping was developed gradually without history of trauma fever pain in other joints shortening developed gradually increasing daily with daily gradual reduction of the daily activities and reduction of the walking distance due to development of pain due to the complaint of pain after walking for some distance which is gradually reducing that is the history all of you know so the history should start with its chief complaints and the history of present illness should comprise of these three portions of the uh, three portions first is the elaboration of the chief complaints second one is the important positive history and important negative history important positive history to support your diagnosis and two important negative history to rule out the other diagnosis this is most important and lastly the cardinal symptoms this will comprise the history of present illness so sim similarly so i just i, I in a nutshell i just uh, want i started with this chip complaints then elaboration of this chip complaints like this limping and the shortening and important negative history is i already mentioned that is there is no history of uh, 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 significant uh, trauma at the just in, uh, during the initiation of the complaints there is the no history of high fever or pain in other charts that is how we ruled out the immediate traumatic disease or the infective disease or uh, high lip that is uh, that is uh, septic in, uh, infection a uh, septic infective disease and also the pain in other joint with the inflammatory disorders lastly the cardinal symptoms what is the importance of this cardinal symptom if the cardinal symptoms are positive that indicates is a grave disease that means it is a the spreading infection or it is a malignant disease or any systemic disease that means that involves the multiple system that will involve that will involve the appetite reduction of the body weight but they are unfor but uh, in this case there is no loss of appetite no significant loss of appetite reduction of the body weight no disturbance of the blood or bowel habit and sleep there is a past history as a important significant past history the history of fall from tree one year back without bed confinement or any special treatment any specific treatment required at the time except some medication he uh, he required and uh, following which the patient becomes asymptomatic absolutely for last 6 months and and uh, everything every problem uh, there is a pain, limping and the limb length discrepancy started for last 6 months only so there is a pain abs absolutely symptomless period for last 6 uh, uh, months before developing any uh, symptom the personal history i already go by the alphabetic manner that is a b c d e f like this a for no history of allergy alcoholism the addiction b for no history of birth trauma bleeding disorder c no history of contact with tuberculosis d for no history of drug intake or addiction e for environment that patient live in a pakka house is not a uh, but it is a low social status there is a, um, there is f is a no family is suggestive of the familial disease infection like tuberculosis etc and as it is a child so we have to include the immunization history which is completed in this case <clears throat> general survey the patient consists alert cooperative build is asthenic build nutrition is very poor in this case 
otherwise other uh, say other problems are uh, absolutely normal pallor negative cyanosis negative icterus negative all everything there is no significant other abnormality as you can see in this case but pulses is relatively higher it is 120 per minute it is as you can see here and relatively uh, there is a respiratory rate is relatively more now interpretation from the history of the 14 years boy so so that is the gradual onset that is a monoarticular disease limping and the limb length discrepancy progressive there is no cause that how do you know it is a progressive so see this is the uh, there are three criteria of any progression of the disease that is the deterioration of the clinical symptoms as you can see here there is next is the there's a gradual restriction of the daily activities and lastly the gradual reduction of the walking distance these three is already present in this case within last six months so in that sense we can tell it we can uh, uh, consider that this progression is relatively rapid for last six months and there is no constitutional symptom no cardinal symptom past history but there is a past history of significant trauma without complaints so these are the summary so i i, I already i instruct i already advise to my, uh, all the students once we complete the history always make a summary of the history so that we can make a probable diagnosis probable diagnosis because at the end of the day when we have asked why to is what you are telling this type of diagnosis so we have to start from the history the points in favor of this points in favor of like this so from this we can conclude as there is a history of significant one year back and the symptoms started six months that could be a traumatic disease like malunited or non or non united any uh, traumatic or pathological fracture of the proximal femur that is one but the problem is that the, why it is progressive how do we explain the progressiveness of this uh, disease Yes. Can anybody tell from the former postgraduates? There is a history of significant trauma, but at the same time, there is a progressive disease. Can anybody uh, contribute? How the progression of the disease can be explained? Any, any, uh, Rohit? Progression. Uh, can be can occur in uh, any uh, low grade infection there is where there is a uh, slow destruction of the joint see when you think any any pathology always try to think of any single pathology so as we are thinking of the trauma we can relate we can think of the same pathology so but double pathology is a very very rare problem so we should not consider in the first uh, uh, first instance so if you traumatic so how how the traumatic disease can be progressive? Think like in the map in this slide. Don't mix the trauma with infection. Anybody? Uh, any following? Yes, yes. The uh, following uh, trauma, the, there can be development of uh, arthritis in the joint. <clears throat> If there is a malunion or uh, malunion may lead to change in the hip biomechanics that <clears throat> which type of arthritis you have to mention it now there are several types of arthritis I think. <clears throat> infective arthritis inflammatory arthritis infective arthritis pardon Following trauma, which type of arthritis is common? It is a secondary degenerative arthritis, isn't it? Degenerative arthritis. So, how much time is required for de degeneration? <clears throat> Suppose there is a fracture at the, at, the, at, the, at the joint, and how much time is required for degeneration? I can come to the panelist or senior uh, senior orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Majumdar. Can you? Contribute? Yeah, actually, the uh, the students are actually not. I think they are not concentrated in the history yes. because uh, they are not concentrated because uh, suddenly he jumped into infection. But the patient started with trauma, and the, there was uh, no insignificant trauma because there was no confinement to the bed in the exactly in the beginning beginning of the story. But they are not listening properly. What I observe. And second thing is that uh, we we have uh, elaborated the history that uh, progression of the disease by the uh, three conditions, uh, three situations as you have elaborated them. They are also not listening to that. 
but uh, if it is a trauma then trauma will take a long time it is not the, the six months or or uh, five months or, or six absolutely, or eight absolutely, months absolutely yeah absolutely this is the message this is the message i want to give to the all the students if the trauma is the uh, because of degeneration Mm. Sir, can you please uh, highlight how much uh, average time of trauma tra duration is required? Uh, I mean, minimum, actually, see, trauma can take years to form the degeneration. It is not possible to produce degeneration in a child of 14 years old to have a degeneration and started with walking loss, uh, reduction of the walking distance, and also some deformity and shortness. Because Absolutely. they have all. Absolutely right, sir. So this is the information I want to convey to all the postgraduates. This is the extremely important uh, the experience uh, that you can tell. That is, a, at least years is required. Years. That means sometimes it is 10 years. 5 years to 10 years may be required for full-blown picture of secondary degenerative arthritis. Okay? So the degenerative arthritis, yes, if it develops, then it is progressive. But 6 months is, is uh, significantly <laughs> insufficient. So any 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 other comment any other uh, explanation see if you analyze from this uh, from this very level you can easily uh, sort it out the problem so any any anybody any other cause apart from traumatic arthritis any other possibilities trauma it is a 14 years boy presented with gradual onset progressive disease Boys, another thing, another thing to point out is very, uh, very nicely pointed um, out in the history. Uh, Anando, can I talk? Yes, please, please. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know how these courses are structured, but I'm giving you an outside view of this. So there are a couple of more possibilities we need to keep thinking yes, uh, because there is a history of trauma. Patient was fine for some time and then the pain has started. So one thing you can think about is avian, which is developing. An avian can develop very quickly and can be progressively bad. And the other thing you can think about is a cartilage injury, which is the chondrolysis, which again is good in the beginning. And then there's a rapid deterioration, which happens after six months or so. So those two, again, will come to my mind in this case. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So that is the possibility. Yes, these are the possibility of progression. But apart from that, this is a very, very common uh, common finding is there. In, in the 14 years boy, there is physis is there, physis. So if it is a physical injury, especially for the boy, it is relatively the second, second growth spot occurs relatively late. So physis is active. So if there is a facial injury, that is the most common cause of progression. Uh, that is a, that is a, uh, uh, in this case, that may be the possibility in this case. So trauma with facial injury may be the possibility of progression. Next one is the infective. So um, uh, so how do what is the points against the trauma trauma and progression? But uh, can, can you, but from a history, it is the trauma is the first uh, diagnosis followed by the infection, as the Dr. Uh, Rakesh rightly mentioned. So this is the uh, possibilities. Next is the infection. Is the, is the which type of infection can it, we can keep it in mind? That is a always it is a low grade infection, most probably the tubercular. But the problem is there is absence of pain or fever. So, but uh, but the problem is there sometimes in 20% cases there is absence of absolutely there is no uh, constitutional symptoms and there is a, a, the the cardinal symptoms affection it comes very late it may be very synovite is a very slow growing process now the inspection see this is the ins inspectory finding as you can see here can any uh, Rohit can you please uh, contribute what are the inspectory finding yes sir yes. Yes, sir. So, so infection from the front, we, uh, we can see the patient is standing on both his feet and uh, the uh, left shoulder is relatively at a lower level than the right shoulder and uh, the, the left-sided anterior superior iliac spine is upriding. And uh, on his atti attitude of the patient, the right knee is flexed so that we can understand there is a shortening in his left limb and from the side uh, the absolutely right, absolutely lumbar... right. So now see the gate. Tell the finding, tell the features of gate. Professor, professor, your gate, gate slide is not moving. 
Which slide is numbered, but here it is a boy. Okay. No, no, you have, you have to advance the slide, or else you double click on that slide. Is it not? It is not visible. No, no. The slide is visible, but the video is not visible. It is not visible. Or else you can go to the main, main, main slide from where you inserted okay. the video. Okay. 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 You can go to the origin and then start. Is it visible now? No, no, no. You have not. Uh, okay. uh, we have to. We have to. Uh, I mean, we have to go out. We have to go out you, and you, end. You yeah. minimize it. You minimize it and then go there. So no, no, you just minimize this one. मुझे movie files the ah, good yeah yeah very good yeah 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 uh, the roid please describe with the gate yes sir yes. so the we can see that uh, patient is walking bipedal unassisted and uh, uh, there is we can notice that there is drooping of shoulder towards the pathological side that is on the left side so uh, and without swaying of the body okay so it is so there we can see that it is a short short limb gait and the shoulder is drooping vertically so we can say that it is a bipedal un unassisted short limb type of gait affecting the left hip yes why not it is a trainer back gait so uh, in trendelenburg gait there will be swaying of the body from side to side so that is not present here and the shoulder is drooping vertically so we can see say that it is a short limb gait rather than a trendelenburg gait exactly okay so yes it is the this is the short limb gait if it is a trendelenburg gait there is a swaying of the body on the same side that means there is a uh, there is in a coronal plane swaying but here here there is a drooping of the shoulder up and down so this is a, a short limb gait basically okay now uh, i'm again i'm coming to the yeah. uh, neck uh, so again you answer and again you go to the powerpoint and share yeah yes 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 yeah, yeah okay so very good yes. gait so this is a short limb gait but they see there is a hyperlordosis and everything he has uh, explained there is a short there is now the inspection inspection is see now I think this will also not. Uh, uh, is uh, oh, this yeah. a, is the video is visible? No. Okay. You continue. Yeah. No, no, no. Professor Paul, the video won't run here. Video won't run here. Ah, suppose do it. Suppose do it. We understood. Actually, you continue, please. Yeah. Acha, we jachi. I will cover off. Pole jachi. You want to show this fine move? Ah, jachi, jachi. Yeah. Yes, is it visible now? Yeah, it is visible. It's visible. Yeah, visible. Yeah. See, see, see this is see. now they explain this, uh, Rohit. Please explain this. Yes, yes, sir. Scoliosis disappeared. Yeah. Video, sir. Yes, sir. So the in, in standing position from the back, we can uh, see that there is a scoliosis in this patient. and but when the patient sits and bends forward the scoliosis disappears so 
Rohit, first describe the scoliosis. First describe the scoliosis, then describe this. Okay, sir. Why you are telling me this? Why you are telling me this? Why? Okay, sir. Which, which, information, which information will you get from inspection to tell it is as a scoliosis? Okay, sir. The spinal, a spinal line from the back, we can see that in the lumbar region, there is a convexity towards the right side. And uh, in patients standing in anatomical position, the space uh, between the hand and the body is increased. In the right side, as compared to the left side, so patient, so the body is bending towards the right. Side. Yes, asymmetrical, asymmetrical limb sir. trunk space, asymmetrical limb yes, trunk, one limb trunk space. That is that is a big because in inspection you cannot, uh, you may not. If it's a very hefty patient, you may not identify the spine. It is this is very lean and thin patient. That is why you can easily see the spine. But if it's a very hefty patient, yes, only the limb trunk space. Uh, symmetry is required to diagnose whether it is a uh, coronal plane asymmetry or not. Now, carry on. What are the problems? Is it a primary scoliosis or is it a secondary scoliosis? How do sir, uh, as the uh, as the scoliosis is disappearing when the patient is sitting and bending forward, so it it may not be a primary scoliosis, but due to um, functional due to a hip pathology under underlying hip pathology. Okay. So, so how do you know whether it is a is it like it is a hip pathology or due to the list? It is a hip pathology or a list. Do you understand my question? What is list? How the difference between list and scoliosis? Okay, I'm telling. List is basically it is a uniplanar deformity. It is a coronal plane deformity. Is usually due to the mechanical problem that is due to the the the, the, the prolapsed intervertebral disc. Or any painful condition in the spine. Okay, but scoliosis is a three-dimensional problem. Okay, but scoliosis may be secondary to the hip pathology, and that can be easily diagnosed by asking the simple, asking the patient to sit so that the limb length discrepancy is gradually it is eased off. So that is that is why it is seen. So the, if the patient is asked to sit, the scoliosis completely vanished, and that indicates it is a hip pathology. Okay. But if it's a list, still the list will become positive, and the list will only become vanished when the patient is asked to lean forward. Okay. 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 So now come to I am again in the uh, uh, main lecture. Okay, so this is the pathology. Now we come to the inspection deformity. So the, tell the, the other deformity, Rohit. How to identify yes, the limb and discrepancy in inspection? So, uh, in inspection, limb and discrepancy can be seen first. Uh, we need to uh, on inspection we can see that uh, the left sided pelvis. Um, the left sided no, anterior no, no, no. iliac no, spine is... inspection we have to, cannot see the, the level of the yeah. pelvis okay. any other any so other can, uh, the... Uh, level of the patella no no and the uh, medial malleolus no anybody anybody else any anybody else because these are the, the this, see there are some several pathology without touching the patient it is very difficult to identify exactly the level of the patella or level of the medial malleolus okay so what is apparently is easily visible that is the level of the hill so we have to see from the side so we have to see the hill level if the hill level is discrepant is there any discrepancy of the hill level we can easily identify the limb length discrepancy okay now there is a flexion adduction internal rotation deformity so how do you know the inspection there, there is a flexion deformity answer it and the yes. healer point i have to add yes, when please. you look at the heel from the side yes. the foot should be at 90 degrees otherwise uh, the heel position changes when you flex absolutely. and extend the heel absolutely 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 right absolutely right. okay so uh, how do you know it is a, a flexion deformity from inspection can anybody do it please answer it Uh, see, it was the patient. If you see from the patient in supine position, so see there are some basic prerequisites of inspection. We have to inspect in standing position, supine position, prone position, as also from the front, side, and back. 
okay so so basic prerequisites of inspection is patient should either in standing in anatomical position or should uh, lie in a supine position in a hard couch in a well illuminated uh, uh, area where the spine should be straight and limbs should be as parallel as possible to each other okay and should be patient should be adequately undressed this is the most important so this is the prerequisites of inspections so this is inspection from side if you see from the side normally the light on the opposite side should not be visible if the light on the opposite side is visible that indicates there is a hyperlordosis and that may be the secondary to hip pathology so there is a there is a possibility of you can tell in inspection should not be very dogmatic you have to tell there is likely to be seems to be like this because that has to be confirmed right, right. during palpation okay so patient may have patient may have flexion deformity because hyperlordosis may be secondary to comp compensated uh, compensation to uh, in case flexion deformity okay now the adduction deformity the patient may have the adduction deformity how do you know that because the affected side the asis in the left asis you can easily see the asis is at a higher level now how do you know it's the internal rotation deformity uh, can rohit can you answer it internal rotation deformity of the left lower limb Left lower lower limb appears to be flexed. Sir, the, no, pet, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Sir, the pet, uh, patella in uh, usually should face the upward and outward, but in this case, in the left lower limb, the patella is facing upward, but uh, internally, that is towards you know, the midline. So, so patella direction is, of the patella. Yes, you are right. So patella should lie just uh, away from the roof, but here it is towards the roof. It is just inwards, isn't it? You can compare on the other side. it is inward so it is appears to the left lower limb appears to be flexed adducted and internally rotated at the hip okay now come to the palpation temperature is the first uh, is the temperature should be tell that the temperature a superficial temperature of the scapular triangle is normal okay now how to add there are some points i am not going to detail how to identify the symphysis pubis and anterosupinal spine greater trochanter how to identify the anterior hip point how to how to find the sciatic point like this the most important point is the anterior hip point here the tendinosis is positive sad and also the the bistrochanteric tendinosis is positive in this case so now the question is is there any other method to elicit hip joint tenderness sometimes it is doubtful sometimes the, there is a doubtful tenderness doubtful tenderness in the in the hip joint so so patient may overreact or patient may that may, may have some Uh, um, abnormal sensation uh, in, in during the elicitation of the tenderness. So, if there is any 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 other method to elicit the hip joint tenderness from remote area, yeah, indirect evidence. Yes, indirect tenderness. Very good. So that is that is the way I'm just telling. So this is the anvil test, similar to the spine. So this is anvil test. Just elevate the uh, limb, keeping the knee extended, hyper extended, so that there is lock, knee is locked. so that any any thumping pressure on the uh, on the hill that will be directly transmitted to the hip and the same thing same maneuver can be modified in this manner there is a figure of four test whether the affected limb is flexed if it is allowed to do that if there is absolutely painless then only you can do that you see this is these are the only methods when there is a no significant tenderness if there is a subtle tenderness you can easily use this that is they have to make it figure of four where the lateral malleolus of the affected limb should lie just above the patella in this manner we have to push we have to push the thigh in a axial manner towards the affected uh, hip joint and the the patient is the patient may complain of pain at the groin pain at the thigh or pain at the back so there are some uh, some consequences then similar test is done specially for the uh for the uh, loosen when there is suspicion of the loosening of the prosthesis hip prosthesis so in that case you can use this test specific test and patient may complain of groin and that is due to the hip pathology or if there is some assay that is loosening of the acetabular component there is a patient will complain of pain at that region or if patient may complain of pain at the thigh if there is a loosening of the femoral stem or patient may complain of pain at the back that may be due to the, uh, that any any infective any in, inflammatory pathology of the spine Uh, or any uh, prolapsed intervertebral disc or rheumatoid arthritis so this is the anvil test or the axial compression test especially for diagnosis of the subtle tenderness when there is no significant tenderness then only we can use this test now come to the digital brand strangle this uh, the see this base is appears to become equal now rohit can you tell how the digital brand strangle can be elicited and uh, where the your uh, which finger to be kept in which point rohit yes sir yes sir yes. 
डिजिटल डिजिटल ब्रांड टांगल इज यूज टू सी इफ देर इज एनी सुपरा टोकेंटरिक शॉर्टनिंग और नॉट सो इट इज अ थ्री फिंगर टेस्ट सो इंडेक्स फिंगर सो द थम शुड बी इन द एंटीरियर सुपियर इलियक्स पाइन द मिडिल फिंगर वुड बी ऑन द टिप ऑफ द ग्रेटर टोकेंटर and the index finger would be in the imaginary line from the anterior superior iliac spine to vertically downward in with patient in supine position exactly so in supine position this brand strangle is 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 used in the palpation palpation but there are some specialized uh, well the specialized measurement should be done in measurement section but in uh, palpation palpation uh, during the palpatory section we have to keep the thumb in the asis Tip uh, the middle finger is at, at the tip of the greater trochanter, and the index finger is the imaginary vertical line. Okay. Now the Thomas test. Now what is the interpretation of the Thomas test? Uh, Rohit, can you tell? See, there uh, are several yes, tests, uh, that, and the test should be done in a sequential manner. So any once you have asked in any to do the to perform any test, always start from the from the uh, the, uh, the the we have to take the permission of the patient. We have to take, talk. The, uh, talk with the patient to take the permission. Next, the uh, adequate exposure of the patient. These are the two basic steps to be given in all patients. Take the permission and take the uh, make they make him understand what is going to be done. That is one. Second one is the second one is the uh, adequate exposure. Now start with the test. Now the, in the Thomas test first uh, first what is the first point? Rohit, can you tell? What is the first yes, point? Sir, yes, sir. So, so after taking a uh, proper consent and exposure. uh we we should uh, tell us the patient to flex flex his normal non pathological <laughs> side first point no no first uh, point is you have to start from the inspection first point you have to start yes, with sir. the inspection which inspection which from inspection inspection, which will... inspection uh from inspection if we can see that in the lumbar region a light is passing through and we can uh, so the there is increased lumbar lordosis So we uh, are. It should be examined in hard bed usually. Exactly. Then uh, up with 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 that, and we can proceed with our Thomas test by placing our hand be below the lumbar spine and ask the patient to and for the possibly flex the normal normal hip, and after the obliteration of the lumbar spine, when the, the lumbar spine the touches our knuckles. How do you know the 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 spine the lordosis is obliterated? So the lordosis obliter we can say that the lordosis obliterated when the lumbar spine touches our knuckles of our hand. Yes, we have to keep we have to keep the, your hand between the bed and the back. Bed and the back, yes. Sir. And then now we have to ask the patient to flex the normal limb till the your flex the back limb. touches. That means you should not completely obliterate the lordosis. You actually no, sir, no. obliterate the hyper ex exaggerated component of the lordosis. Exaggerated. Most important. Yes, sir. Okay. Now rest is the same. Is there any other qu query? Then we can again come and see. The, it is evident in this uh, picture there is no flexion deformity. There is, I think, is negligible. Uh, But now the question is, when when there is some query, we are confusion. How do know whether there is any uh, uh, any some sample amount of flexion deformity present or not? What is the uh, uh, confirmatory method? Can you tell? What is the confirmatory method by which we can easily adapt? We can confidently tell patient has no uh, flexion uh, flexion deformity. Yes, Simple answer is that. Very yes, good extension, your doctor. Yes, you have to ex you have to examine the extension of the of the affected side. If the free extension is present, you can confidently tell there is no flexion deformity. Okay. Now come to the now flexion is terminally restricted as you can see here. There is 20 degree less than the normal and it is painful, terminally painful. Now there is a adduction adduction deformity. So uh, see this is a 30 degree adduction adduction deformity. Uh, so now the question is, Rohit, can you tell how do you know what is the end point? So how do you know your anterior superior iliac spine is coming at a same level? So that is the end point, and now we can measure the exact deformity on the left side, isn't it? Yes. Now tell the your the so, how do you know what is the end point? So uh, we need to square the pelvis in manner to see the how much addu adduction or yes. abduction deformity yeah, is yeah, there. How do you know what what is the end point of this maneuver to during the squaring? 
So the how to, how, how to keep the, the hands. Yeah. Till. So, so, so the we need to keep our fingers over the anterior superior iliac spine. Okay. And uh, when they both come in the same horizontal level, so that we can assure that the abduction. How do know? Uh, abduction deformity is corrected. Bit, it's a little bit uh, precise. How do know whether it is coming in a horizontal level? Just by seeing is not enough. By using your eyes are not enough. There must be some specific and minute points so that yeah. you have to. If it is a child, it is easy for you. But it is an adult with the white belt. Not is easy. Little In that case, it is not easy. So, what should be the precise method by which we can know whether it is this both the SIS at is coming at a same level? Same level. Uh, Doctor Mojumdar is already you are giving the hint. Yeah, this is for the child. This is for a child, and this is for the adult. This yes. is for the child. This is for the adult. Yes. So you can use your hand. That is the, your uh, ulnar border is uh, appear to become straight. So that is, so that if you keep your ulnar border in the both the SIS and you can make an imaginary line from a, a umbilicus to your uh, hand. That means the the angle between the both the side will become equal. Is it equal? It? Should be equal. Yes. Is it? That is the same manner of the Kothari's method. So in this, if it is a severely painful uh, condition, so the patient is not allowed to move the pelvis. So to identify the how much adduction or abduction deformity, then you can apply this Kothari's method. What is that Kothari's method? Please tell, tell quickly. Some examiners ask about the Kothari method. Quickly. So we have to add. We have to make a long, long vertical line from an, from umbilicus. Uh, yes. We have to make right. a line, vertical line from umbilicus to symphysis pubis, and join the both the SIS, and then uh, the the angle. We have to measure the angle on both side of this line. Okay, upper part, both the side of this line. So ideally, if it is a SIS at the same level, the angle of the both the side of this vertical line should be equal, 90 degree. But if it is a higher level. The, the affected side, affected will be acute angle, opposite side will be obtuse angle. If it is a lower level, SI is a lower level, the affected side will be, be a obtuse angle, other side will be acute angle. Okay. Now come to the, the movements. See, this, uh, there, there is already 30 degree adduction, but there is no free adduction. And on, on term, it is also terminally painful. Now, the question is is there any other alternative way of adduction testing? Because the, the patient may be very much hefty. So in yeah. that case, so it is very, side, really very difficult to, may, to test the adduction. So this is very hefty thigh. So in that case, it is very cumbersome to uh, test the adduction. So is there any other better way of me measuring? Can anybody tell anybody from your postgraduates? Okay, I'm telling. So this it is a simple thing. We have to remove the uh, uh, other other uh, other leg from the way from the line of the adducting leg. So how can it be done? So that can be simply can be done by flexing the hip, flexing the hip knee on the normal side, on the on the, on the opposite on the other side, other uh, other limb, keeping the knee straight, elevate the hold the limb away above the above the bed, and ask the other limb to make the adducting. So in the lower part is absolutely free. Do you get my point? Somebody, some yeah, part, they have some not followed. Yes, yes. You have to elevate, hold the limb. Suppose if you are testing yes, the sir. left side. Suppose you are testing the left side. Ask the patient, or you can make passively, passively elevate the right lower limb, the right side above, yes. above the bed, keeping above the bed in in a in the upward manner, keeping your knee absolutely straight so that the lower part is absolutely free. Now ask the patient to do adduction. Okay. So it is, it, is, it is very easy to make the adduction movement. Okay. Now come to the, the rotation. So in, see the internal rotation. See the internal rotation is. Can be seen in three ways. Yeah. Yes. So what are the importance? Can you tell please? Rohit. So the internal. Uh, so the internal rotation uh, in uh, with knee extended is appears to be increased in the left lower left limb left lower limb and uh, is it already rotated, internally rotated see that see the patella patella yes, is already sir. internally rotated 
So it is internal rotation deformity, and there is no free range of motion, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Now, what is the what is the importance of testing internal rotation and external rotation in prone position? So, so with supine position, up the we can know the examiner findings, and with comp, when we compare with it in the prone position, so if we can see if there is any uh, um, sectoral sign present or not. No, no, that is different. No, no. So, Examining the rotation in a in a prone position, what is happening? You see, Dr. Mojumda, please explain this. So you Dr. see, uh, uh, no, no, you see in the supine position, what is happening? There is little flexion of the hip, and he is doing the internal rotation. That means, if he is flexing the hip, means there is some room being produced there, and there is capsular laxity. But what is happening here? You see, in prone position, the hip is at tray tending to be tending to be extended. You see, the hip is tending to be extended. 30 degree FMD is there. You see, the hip is tending to be extended. So, the entire capsule is becoming tight. So, you cannot get that amount of movement as you can see here, in this case, first case. And uh, similarly, you see the internal and external rotation, both are being affected. Yes. Because of the so it's a easily comparison. Comparison can be done simultaneously during his prone position. And in prone position, patient is life is becoming very comfortable. So if you do the extend in the supine position, you have to lift the both the lower limb above the above the level of the bed to keep the knee locked. Otherwise, there's some rotation of the knee joint will intermingle with the rotation of the hip joint. But in the in the prone position, it is it's not required. So in that case, patient feels much more comfortable, and you can similar uh, the comparison can be done simultaneously on the both sides. So it is easily done. So you see in this case, there are the, all the uh, the rotations the, the, the rotations are restricted, especially the, there is no internal rotation. It is already internal rotation deformity, and there is external rotation is done. Uh, it is no uh, there's no question of external rotation. Now the uh, the, the hey, Arando, can I come back here and ask yes. you something? Yes, yes, please. You know, the in the prone position, the central picture, if you see, yes. in like our patient had a FFD. Is that test valid in prone position in this case, if you have FFD? If there is FFD, then it is very difficult to do. So the, in that case, we can, there are, uh, can do the super- Otherwise, yeah. Uh, yes, otherwise. Okay, fine. Yes, yes. In, so, uh, so, so flexion deformity, you cannot do. It depends. We have five minutes. Five minutes, sir. More okay. uh, for this case. Okay, okay. Minutes. But this is very important. Just, uh, I'm, I'm Rajiv, yeah. Rajiv, this is very important for yes, this. Yes, uh, actually, sir, we have to maintain time also because every case has forty-five okay, minutes. Okay. Sir, oh, okay, sir, okay. Sir, actually, but as the as I am the opener, so I'm just uh, just yeah, yeah. just right. to discuss the yes, yes, yes. yes. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, right. I'm fit. Okay. Uh, just I'll, I'll take another 10 minutes. I'm just yes, sir. thank you, sir. Uh, okay, so rotation see the rotation and abduction is very important and inspection. Rotation and abduction inflection is extremely important to know whether there is any mechanical defect of the femur. So, in that case, in this case, that little bit uh, jog of movement is possible in this uh, if, when the, we flex the knee. So, there, there, is a, there is a suspicion of the, uh, the, the sectorial sign. So I don't, I can't uh, tell it is a significant sectorial sign, but there is a possibility of this. There's a jog of movement, which is not absolutely uh, impossible in extended hip. Now the, uh, the range of more, the shortening, this apparent shortening is three centimeter. If we do the Galeazi test, which is specially important for the uh, pediatric age group, we can easily identify, you have to see from the front as also from the side. From the front, if there is um, some discrepancy of the height that indicates the tibial um, uh, limb length discrepancy, if you see from the side, if there is a, there is a, uh, there is a discrepancy of the tibial tuberosity or the height of the knee, that is the uh, uh, thigh shortening, that is femoral shortening. So you can easily guess it and you can do the true shortening if there, uh, if there is an apparent shortening from a true shortening. So there's some question is asked, so what are the steps of true length measurement? So these are the steps you can do from one to eight. The take consent, adequate exposure, check level of the SIS, mock tip of the greater, greater truncator, draw the brand strangle, identify the medial joint line, identify the tip of the medial millers. Then you do the segmental length. So the, see, this is the this is the way of uh, uh, the step, uh, the different steps you can use that uh, during the true length measurement. Now, how to make the GERD measurement? So this is very important. So for the GERD measurement, we have to identify the maximum muscle GERD, which is present on the normal limb. And, and suppose that uh, on the right side, the maximum muscle GERD is present 15 centimeter away from the ASIS. Why ASIS? Why not from the knee? Because we are concerning the from the hip disease. 
So this is the so maximum girth on the right side is 15 centimeter from the A size. So in that we have in that level we have to measure the girth. Now on the come to the affected side. So we have to make a similar 15 centimeter mark from the A size, and then we have to mark the girth. And yeah, in this case it is three centimeter high girth wasting. So this is special. So so this is significant wasting. How when do you know this significant? When you tell it's a significant, that means if there is a girth wasting is one centimeter or more. It is significant wasting. Okay, that means it is a severe debilitating disease or severe uh, disease is occurring on that side. Maybe due to pain, maybe due to some diseases. Okay. Now the special test, as you can see here, this is a special test. This is a this is a Tendelbach test. You can easily identify. You see, this is the it basically it is an inspector palpatory test. You have to see from the back. And what is the interpretation? As you can see here, when the patient is standing on the left side, this is affected side, the the pelvis uh, is. That on the uh, normal side is at a lower level. So what is it? Is it is it a positive Tendelbach test or is it, uh, or it is a uh, yes, it is a positive Tendelbach test, but it is not a true. Uh, it is a false positive Tendelbach test. So so basic prerequisites of Tendelbach is patient should stand in a bipedal unassisted uh, gait for at least it's a single stance gait should be uh, possible should be able to at least thirty seconds. And there is one second, there should not be any coronal pain deformity. That means there should not be any abduction, adduction deformity. But still, if in this, suppose in this case, there is a adduction deformity. If you do this Tendelbach test, there will be false positive test. Similarly, if it is a abduction deformity, we will get a false negative test. Now, what is the Duchenne sign? So, there's a Duchenne is a Duchenne sign. So, so in this case, if there's a significant weakness of the abductors, the patient will try to compensate by, by deviating the, uh, the trunk on the affected side. So if the trunk is deviated on the affected side, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the addition of the, uh, that is modification of the standard bug, that is a Duchenne sign, and that indicates severe uh, instability, severe instability due <coughs> to some, uh, uh, some the abductor weakness. Now, indirect tunnel bug test. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going. There are some uh, um, uh, some uh, videos are there. I'm not going into detail. And telescopic test is negative. So there is no significant inguinal lymph nodes, and there is no uh, inguinal lymphadenopathy, and there is no neurovascular deficit apart from the weakness of the quadriceps, which is present because of the, some significant wasting. Now, other systems are normal. So, what are the interpretations? So it is basically from it is a summary of the uh, case. There is a gradual onset limb with limb length discrepancy. It is a progressive, which indicate uh, there is a chronic infection or the facial damage. Now there the are two ways. Now there is no constitutional symptom, no cardinal symptoms. There is a past history of significant trauma, but the query is there is no no immediate functional deficit. So the, the if there is a if we consider the trauma, there is yeah. a possibility of proximal femoral fracture or dislocation. Or the facial injury, or the the the, or the condral injury, as Dr. Rajput is mentioned. But the the condral injury is relatively rare. We should go by the common yeah. common injuries. So if it is a proximal femoral fracture dislocation, it should be instantaneously diagnosed. But facial injury it may be diagnosed late. So that may be the possibility. We'll keep in your mind. Now, from examination, there is a short limb gait. There is a fatigue. There is a flexion adduction, internal rotation deformity. There is a significant wasting. There is a limb length discrepancy. Anterior point is tender, which indicates is a inflammation that moves most commonly from the infection or due to some uh, uh, inflammation of the synovium. All motions terminally painful that indicate synovitis. But at the same time, there is asymmetrical restriction. The flexion is relatively good, whether the internal rotation is uh, absolutely nil. So that indicates the asymmetrical restriction, which is uh, commonly for the mechanical, mechanical defect of the femoral head. Now the significant thigh wasting, it indicates is a chronic debilitating disease, which uh, suits for the, with the chronic infective disease like tuberculosis. Now uh, there is apparent shortening, but no true shortening. Now the diagnosis should, our provisional diagnosis should be the chronic infective synovitis tuberculosis. Chronic tubercular synovitis or art tubercular art early arthritis, or the uh, traumatic synovitis. Yes, it may can maybe be the possibility, but that should start immediately following the trauma. That should not be progressive. What are the other differential diagnoses? The malunited proximal femoral fracture with uh, uh, facial injury, uh, or the chronic or subacute osteomyelitis in the proximal metaphysis of the femur with facial injury. And epiphyseal injury of the proximal femur with facial involvement. So facial involvement is a constant because that indicates a progression. Now, what are the points in favor? This is a tubercular synovitis or arthritis. It's a gradual onset limb. It's a progressive monoarticular chronic disease. The reduction of the walking distance due to pain 
suits for the synovitis or the early arthritis. Next is a short limb gait. There is a flexion adduction internal rotation. That is a, that is the early. There is a feature of the um, arthritis that may be the the, the feature of uh, early arthritis. Now significant wasting, limb length discrepancy, all sorts with this. Anterior point tenderness it is, it is in favor. All motions terminally painful. Significant thigh shortening, the thigh wasting three centimeter. Apparent but no true shortening, which is consistent with the synovitis. But once it is a flu full bone uh, picture of arthritis, there must be some shortening. These are the points in favor. What are the points against? There is no constitutional symptoms or cardinal symptoms. 20% of the tuberculosis shows <coughs> this feature. There is a past history of significant trauma, but there is no immediate functional deficit. Mm -hmm. So that is that there should not be a significant uh, injury that uh, that could be the epiphyseal injury or uh, epiphyseal injury. Now, the asymmetrical restriction of motion, so which is a uh, feature of the mechanical and the sectorial sign, can be easily explained with the asymmetrical facial damage by infection can cause this uh, this uh, this feature. Now, uh, uh, this. Other related differential diagnosis, why not it is a case of tubercular arthritis? Because there is no night cry. If no night cry is there, you can directly tell it is a tubercular arthritis. Fair amount of range is preserved, but whether tubercular arthritis, there is significant restriction will be there. Now there is a middle of, and also there is art, if there is arthritis, the whole arc should be painful. But here the middle of the arc is painless. That is why it is, we are not uh, telling it is a arthritis. And there must be some shortening in arthritis, but here there is no true shortening. Now, why not is a traumatic synovitis? Is again, it is repeating. There is, should should start immediately following trauma and should not be progressing. Now, it, and, and then should uh, again, it should not persist for six months. It is unlikely. Now, facial damage from malunited or non-united fracture dislocation or chronic subacute osteomyelitis. That why not the, this? Why are the points in favor? Because it is a progressive limb, uh, the limb length discrepancy, past history of significant trauma, no constitutional symptom, cardinal symptom. Asymmetrical restriction. This is a mechanical form of restriction. Sectorial sign may be may in favor. If it is, uh, if we consider it, you can keep it in there. Apparent but no true shortening. But point against is a flexion, adduction, internal rotation, which is consistent with the arthritis. That is mostly the consistent with the tubercular arthritis. Entry point tenderness. It is, it is in favor of tubercular arthritis, though it is also a favor feature of chronic osteomyelitis. Now, all motions terminally painful. That is a inflammatory pattern of movement restriction. It is, it is an inflammation. That means in, that is common, most commonly from infection. And significant thigh wasting three centimeter. It is, it is, it is also in favor of, uh, is not in favor of um, uh, malignated uh, fracture. Now, why not degeneration? We already discussed degeneration unlikely as only six months, which is absolutely insufficient. And there is a rapid progression as uh, Dr. Majumdar highlighted. Now, what are the other DDs like Perthes? Why not? It's a case of Perthes. It's a 14 years old boy because age is not in favor. Perthes starts from very earlier age. Now, the anterior point tenderness it goes against Perthes. Uh, three centimeter wasting. All motions involved for last six months. Yes, Perthes sometimes, if, if it is an irritable stage, irritable that, can, stage. That, can, uh, that can present with the all motions involved. But that should persist for long, uh, a short period, three to six weeks like that. But it is a, a painful for last, uh, it is all motions involved for last three, six months. And there's a rapid progression. This is all art feature against Perthes. Now I notice the SCFE. It is anterior point tenderness, three centimeter wasting, all motions involved. SCFE is basically is a mechanical restriction, where the external rotation is excessive in, at the cost of restriction of internal rotation. So uh, the, there's a, this is not a SCFE. And there's a rapid progression is also again it is, a, it is a rapid and progressive progression. It is also against SCFP. Now, this is the radiograph. Uh, so we will start, uh, we'll just stop after one or uh, two slides. Now, um, so this is, a, see, this is the wandering astabulum. How do you know it's a wandering astabulum? This is a radiograph. So we have to tell the radiograph, radiograph of immature child, of the of straight, straight radiograph of the pelvis, including both the heat joint, AP view, shows. What, what are the shows? So, so I'm showing the wandering astabulum, as you can see the broken, uh, this sentence line. And it is gradually, it is brokening. It is so, it is wandering up, okay? The juxtarticular osteoporosis, as you can see here, the outer outer uh, line is uh, not, it's, it is almost uh, ill-developed. Ill it is uh, ill-delineated. So this is in favor of tuberculosis. Next is the reduction of the joint space. You can see here, reduction of joint space. But at the same time, epiphyseal damage is also there. Epiphyseal damage is also this, which is not in favor of uh, tuberculosis, but there is a possibility of uh, epiphyseal injuries one year back. That may be the superiority in this case. Lateral extrusion, you see the lateral, how do you know the lateral extrusion? If you do the Perkins line, the part of the physis, so part of the uh, epiphysis is outside that line. That indicates the lateral extrusion. The so coxa breva, why do, why do it, it is a coxa breva? 
see the reduction of the the, the reduction of neck, the sir. head and the neck yes neck and uh, length of the head and neck that is why it is a coxa vera why it is a coxa vera see the neck shaft angle neck shaft angle is less in this case so th there must be some true shortening why the why the investigator uh, they miss the true shortening now the question is coming now the digital uh, the, the band strangle he used these bands he measured the band strangle in this manner can anybody uh, identify why he missed the true shortening supratrochanic yeah. shortening can anybody please quickly Sure, they did not square the pelvis while exactly, doing this. Exactly, yes. exactly. That is the that is the that is why I am keep the keep, keep, I'm keeping this slide. So the, he, he measured the uh, the band strangle, keeping both the limbs parallel. This is absolutely wrong. That uh, this uh, band strangle is a true measurement. We always, we have to square the pelvis. There is a, the almost thirty degree adduction deformity. So if you square the pelvis, there must be shortening, true shortening. So that is the um, uh, there is a result in how to manage the case. I think I shall uh, stop this. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the, our basic uh, provisional diagnosis. Examination part. Yes, I think I, I can stop. There are several. Uh, yeah. uh, I can. Yeah, over to, over to excellent, excellent, excellent no. demonstration. It was a complete uh, case demonstration of hip examination. And thank you, sir. As usual, it was excellent clinical demonstration. And now I would like Dr. Rakesh Sachput to take over. He is moderator of the next hip case and call Dr. Gigi Kar, sir. Rakesh, da. I think uh, there's nothing to waste time anymore. I yeah, think, yeah, uh, please. Dr. Yeah, Jikar, are you ready with uh, uh, talk on your Rakesh partners? Rakesh is the moderator for this session. Rakesh you can take questions also. I think it's a privilege to call G. Jikar. Um, yeah, yeah. Fascinating speaker. And, and a any PGT, person. if yeah. all the residents, please don't hesitate. You can put your question in chat box so that yeah. our expert faculty can answer anytime. So all the residents, if you uh, uh, don't get shy on here, this is not yes. an examination. This is a crash course for you. So put your questions in chat box and Dr. Somadip and Rakeshda will try to take questions with our expert panel also. Because Dr. A.K. Pal sir and Dr. Gigi Kar, Dr. Rakeshda is Dr. Dilip Majumda, Dr. Sarananda will be here for the whole session. So put your question in the chat box, whatever queries are there. And uh, very nice. I, we must thank Anando that he led the cat out of the bag at the end. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Jijida, please. Yeah. So, uh, after that uh, elaborate talk about the, how to examine the heat, I think uh, clinical method has been extensively uh, attended to. Uh, the PGTs must have noticed all those uh, clinical methods and their uh, interpretations. Now it's time for me to uh, talk on Parthis disease. At the outset, I thank WBA and the WBA team for arranging this and inviting me to for this, and also the PGTs for joining. It's in their interest, though. Let us start. So we all know that Parthis disease is not only a Parthis, but we have two other names associated with. Ideally, there would have been another name, but uh, for a technical reason, because he described that same pathology in the same year but uh, he interpreted as a form of tuberculosis. That's why his name is not included in the world literature, but he has uh, compensated for that. That is well and strong. How uh, Parthis is relevant for the examiners? It can come as a theory paper questions. In the case presentations, there can be a Parthis disease case. And in the X-ray table, there can be a X-ray of uh, some certain stages of Parthis. If we go back to the theory, DNB theory questions, almost regularly the questions come for different aspects of Parthis disease, like a definition, like etiological factors, and basically everything. So PGTs have to learn everything about Parthis disease. So I admit that it's a huge chapter and uh, uh, much of controversial, I think. And the books also admit that Parthis chapter is a very controversial, one of the most controversial, in fact, of whole orthopedic science. In when you are going for a practical examination, you can get a case of uh, LCPD. Typically, it's a child, uh, rarely in MS, but not so rarely in DNB, you'll get an adult healed LCPD with hip pain. And in that case, discussion may go towards head preserving surgery or TH or intricacies. For the time being, we are concentrating on a typical case here. 
we expect your essential skills for the PGTs that you have to take a thorough history. For that, you have to make rapport with the child and the parent and the attendant. Again, comprehensive clinical examination requires rapport and must not hurt the child, especially in front of the examiner. So before the examiner comes, you have completed your clinical examinations and you know in which points the patients start wincing and uh, hurting. So you try to avoid those areas unless you are specifically uh, told to demonstrate those uh, signs. Even then you be very gentle. And taking the notes, that's very important because the notes will be reviewed by your examiner at the end of the session. And summing up the thought process, well, taking, even taking the notes, summing up your thought process, how to present the case, how to organize your uh, next plan of management and uh, take the question. So when you are presenting the case, you may be asked to demonstrate a few signs as asked by the examiner, as you have already seen all the, all the uh, uh, possible uh, signs and symptoms here, but maintain the protocol, okay? Uh, if a book, if a standard textbook says that this case, uh, this uh, test has to be done this way, just follow that without hurting the child, of course. And then provi provide logical provisional diagnosis and the differential diagnosis, formulate a management plan, including investigations, treatment options, counseling, and the prognostication. And all the while, you may be interrupted from time to time by the questions of the examiner. So remember all these. What we do not expect from you is number one, incomplete answer sheet. Maybe you are hurried for time, but try to complete the answer sheet. A child crying from clinical examination, under exposure, and the deficient skin markings. Those are the loopholes. Then wrong demonstration of tests or wrong demonstration, wrong uh, explanation of their logic or interpretations. Then a direct diagnosis. LCPD is basically not a clinical diagnosis. It's a process of exclusion and a radiological diagnosis. So don't tell the examiner that it's a case of Parkinson's disease directly. Then there can be some illogical explanations in differential diagnosis. Please avoid those things. Illogical management suggestions. Suppose there is a no uh, uh, indication for containment and you go on for containment surgeries. Then non-familiarity with even common mm. management, follow-up, and prognostications. Okay. Now we have presented the case. We will try to floor you by the questions. Now the questions may be, a typical question is what is your diagnosis? Then you present your case and don't directly tell that it's a case of Parkinson's disease. Then provisional diagnosis. After that, we are coming to the features and points in favor in a typical scenario. In this, theory helps here. You have to have sound theoretical knowledge for this uh, disease. No escape for that. So it's a case Jijita, of Jijita. Straight, link, then pain. Jijita, yes, just sorry to disturb. Uh, uh, no, no, can you just, okay. sound is not very clear. I think, uh, oh, is that clear, clear on your? Really on your... Because of some uh, Not very good, but uh, audible. Audible. Yeah, so yeah, you can just yeah. lean forward and take like that. So it will be more okay. clear. Yeah, it be should be closer, closer to the mic. mic. If that helps. Yeah. If it's a rolling sound, then it's because of the net. Is there any rolling sound? No, no rolling sound. But no no rolling, rolling sound. sound. Okay, you continue. Then it's about proximity. Fine. Don't Thank make you. it complicated. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. So it's a process of exclusion. Uh, in the last few slides of Professor Pal, we have seen how to differentiate between tuberculosis and uh, Parkinson's disease and what else it can be, the differential diagnosis. Again, theory helps here. Clinically, of course, tuberculous bacillus infection of hip comes the first, others are irritable hip and SCFE. Describe the pain. So the pain of, in case of Perthes disease, this is different from a pain from the other cause that is the tuberculosis of the hip. So how different is it? And sometimes it can be painless. It is a classically thought that it was a painless limping child, but Pain is often there, and that pain is typically a post-activity pain. Night pain, yes or no? In some cases, yes. Then you are confused whether it is a tuberculosis or not. No? Describe the pain in all the parameters. You know already those. What is the site? What is the radiation? And is there any referred pain? Yes. And if the referred pain is there, 
the even if it is not there theoretically the examiner may ask you how the pain can be referred to this area this area and this area okay so be prepared about your neurological knowledge right what is the significance of family history in your provisional diagnosis because uh, some studies have shown that first degree relatives are a very high chance more likely to have lcpd than in general population and why that is so again from theory genetic preponderance you know those mutations etc yeah, from type 2 collagen gene and which of your differential diagnoses have genetic origins have you asked for the general growth and milestones because in perthes disease those are important uh, growth and development is reduced in uh, lcpd then carpal bone age if you think about carpal bone age it is usually 2 years less than the chronological age and if you utter about carpal bone age be sure to remember some of those uh, uh, landmarks which bone ossifies when etc and now it is we call it a radiologic pause previously it was called a skeletal standstill which is a feature of almost all the patients of uh, perthes disease that is why the asking the parents about the general growth and milestones and observing the parents are also important what are the other differential diagnoses of lithic child in this age group you already know i'm not going to those have been dealt with by professor park so now you have put your points forward then the question of demonstrating demonstrate wasting definitely you have not missed marking the bony points and where did you measure the circumference in thigh and calf both sides yeah and written those figures in your answer sheet of course which motions are expected to be reduced here you know from theoretical knowledge that abduction internal rotation and which is the first motion to get lost that may be the question so internal rotation is the answer demonstrate the loss of internal rotation in extended versus flexed hip that can be different okay so log roll is one of the method in which hips and knees are both extended prone rotations here hip the knees hips are extended and knees are flexed and supine 90 90 here hips and knees both are flexed demonstrate restricted abduction demonstrate abduction in flexion so you have to stabilize the pelvis compare the other side if there is a usually it's a unilateral thing uh, so compare to the normal side normal side first and then the abnormal side gently so that the child does not win or cry out remember range of motion also varies with disease stage very early there is loss of internal rotation plus minus some abduction but it may resolve later on if the if the if the examiner asks you that what will happen it can resolve in a very small child and the later there is obligatory external rotation this is slightly specific to uh, perthes disease that the knee deviates to the same shoulder towards the same shoulder on flexion in perthes disease uh, initially in small children you do not expect ffd even then you have to know everything about thomas test you've already seen that the extension range is also very important stabilize pelvis in a prone position and then go for the extension range of the normal and then the abnormal side demonstrate the tendelenburg there is no escape from tendelenburg and the <clears throat> different sign then you know the already you know the precondition of attempting the tendelenburg in certain situations you don't you tell the examiner that sir it's not possible to have a trendelenburg test done because of this this and what is the cause of trendelenburg in this particular scenario in this uh, particular case then you have to explain telescopic in some cases telescopic test is positive and if it is the telescopic test is positive um, grade 1 at least positive then you also prognosticate that this is not a, not going to be a very good uh, outcome describe the gait because most of the children will be uh, ambulatory and uh, almost all the children will be ambulatory so you have to describe the gait and this gait usually a mixture of trendelenburg as well as an antalgic phenomenon so the come to the classic portrait of lcp is that small often thin very active running jumping chanchal and limping after strenuous activity so when he is doing all those uh, running jumping he doesn't bother but after a period of uh, those running jumpings he starts limping he or she starts limping and then it is noticeable by the parents mostly noticeable by the parents what next so i will try to come from the diagnosis and the question is how by further investigations and what will be the most relevant investigations over here 
X-ray is the most relevant investigation. See, if the examiner tries to trap you that what is the most sensitive and most um, uh, definitive investigation earliest, then the answer is, of course, MRI. But MRI is not uh, justifiable in uh, early cases because it will not change your plan of management. It will not change your prognosis. And it's costly and uh, difficult to have a child, young child in a MRI entry. How do you advise for X-rays? That is extremely important. What X-rays would you prescribe? AP and the frog lateral gurus. Now I'll show you an X-ray. What is missing in this X-ray? You often forget to tell the technician to prescribe that gonadal protection is absolutely vital because this boy or girl will have many X-rays in his or her later life. So start protecting the gonadal uh, areas from the from very first X-ray. Side question, what is the criteria of a proper AP view? When you go through the chapter of FAI, you will have the criteria of a proper AP view. I'm not going to details in that. One question is here, relevant here is that if, if the AP view looks like an inlet view, what does it mean? It means that there is a flexion contracture and that flexion contracture is masked by the increased lumbar lordosis. And because of that increased lumbar lordosis, there is forward tilting of the pelvis. That is why a vertical beam, which is a typical of a straight AP X-ray, will look like a inlet view. In the X-ray, when uh, basically the X-ray is put forward at that point of time in the view box, and we would expect you to describe the findings in an organized way. Bone, if there is a soft tissue component, soft tissue also. Look at the AP, physis, and metaphysis, then trochanter, calcification lateral to the physis, and also whether there is any acetabular changes. Acetabular changes are not very common in a typical uh, for this disease, unless it is a healed sequelae. Based on those, we expect you to stage the disease, classify the disease, and enumerate any if there is any head at risk signs, and suggest further investigations, management, and prognostic based on those X-rays. Because for about hundred years, people are doing that, and that all those things are applicable in your X-ray table too. If in an X-ray table, you have put uh, the examiner have put a Perthes disease, all those things can come. So you say from the X-ray, it is an LCPD, can you define it? The definition is uh, uh, required in your theory questions you have already seen, that uh, while the child looks, we are talking that the child looks helplessly. And two or three doctors are talking, whatever, what gibber is there talking, he wishes that uh, he would have a smartphone for keeping him engaged. So the definition varies from text to text, but the essential part is that it is idiopathic, it is osteonecrosis of the growing femoral head. That is femoral head in children. Then some added uh, uh, two lines that are the self-limiting and of the capital femoral epiphysis, early childhood, impaired circulation, cause of ischemia is not known. So all these have to be in your definition. And if you go for Tagian, it's a big definition. Not go, don't go for that. After I've seen the X-ray, the examiner asked, what is the radiological differential diagnosis? There was clinical differential diagnosis, and then now you are in the front of X-ray. So if it is a bilateral, then the differential diagnosis can be multiple epiphyseal dysplasia or even spondyl epiphyseal dysplasia. <clears throat> Why do you want to differentiate? Basically, sir, because management and prognosis, prognosis are different. In LCPD, 85 to 90% are in that. Uh, we know that there is a kind of TB heap which looks like a Perthes disease. Professor Shanmugo Sundaram has a, a classification for tuberculosis of uh, the heap. And one of those classification, one of the part of the classification is a Perthes kind of tuberculosis. Uh, the DD is long, list is long. Tell only those about which you know a little bit about. If the examiner asks for what else, what else, etc., only then step to a unknown territory. These are the theoretical things. Basically, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, both are acting through a cognitive pathway. Uh, down, Gaucher, almost the same. A venous uh, blockade, then achondroplasia and hemophilia. 
May I be asked that what are the ideological factor, doctor? Controversially, race and hereditary, passive smoking, indoor wood, wooden stove that is chula, examine uh, that is uh, demonstrated by Professor Benjamin Joseph, uh, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorders, economic deprivation, of course, then manganese deficiency, coagulopathy, and type 2 collagenopathy. These are the etiologic factors from theory, but a few may have to be uh, asked in the practical examination also. Then what are the clinical head at risk signs? Those are that age of detection, age of first presentation is eight years or more. If the child is a girl, if she's obese, and if there is already stiffness uh, at a first presentation, and if there is instability, that is a telescoping is positive. We go to the history, you know, all those. In 1910, there were three reports from three different parts of, uh, of the world. And in the same year, Waldenstrom presented, but he thought it was to be tuberculosis. And then in 1913, uh, Perthes did the first histology, one of his patients who died from accident, the histology was done. Now this year is about 111 years from late Kevin Perthes. 100 years, 100 plus years from Sun's description of clinical features, a golden jubilee of Catterall's paper, and 40 years, etc. But still, we don't know the exact cause of Perthes disease. Essential pathology is ischemic necrosis of the developing femoral head. That is in the definition. And everything starts from that. What comes before the AVM, we don't know. We can only postulate. We can have etiological factors, but not a specific cause. Historically, Inflammation, that is a traumatic synovitis or trauma. All these questions are theoretical, but sometimes those may be asked in the exam practical examinations, if, especially if the examination is a DMD one. No time limits. Okay, then associations, you already covered those. Those are associations. Till now, maybe a larger series, they can be have conclusive proof. Family history, factor five and protein S, protein C deficiencies. And these are uh, variations you see, uh, Velour and Monipal. Those two uh, areas of the same country can have tenfold differences in prevalences. 0.4 versus 4.4, 11 times difference. Again, South Africa versus Liverpool, see the difference. The usual sequence of events we all know that uh, vascular disruption occurs somehow that weakens the femoral head. That femoral head cannot stand even the physiological load. So it gets fractured, starts deforming and excluding while all the while the cartilage gets nourished from the synovial fluid and doesn't uh, de uh, degenerate too much and it continues to grow. After that vasculitis grows again because this is a young child, that's the basic difference between a growing child and an adult with the navium. This can further deform in this stage because of this vascularity. And after that, it is revascularized. So that is called a self-limiting disease, but it is deformed, the head is deformed and extruded. So the sequelae can be uh, asymptomatic for, the, for all the range from asymptomatic to very disabling, disablingly arthritic. For the deformation, there are two key questions. What causes the deformation? And what makes the deformation irreversible? Sir, the deformation, the answer will be like this. That's how the deformation in the late fragmentation stage because of the weak damaged bone. Then in the repair stage because of the weak new bone. And because the, mama, the, the new bone is not a strong lamellar kind of thing so that even muscle forces in addition to the gravity can cause the deformation. And what makes the deformation irreversible? Now, if the deformed part, 20% of or more than that of the head lies uncovered, it is not covered by the acetabulum, then it becomes irreversible, hard and irreversible. Then there is a radiological scenario because you have already seen an X-ray. You'll be presented with an X-ray. From that X-ray, you'll have to be answering that what stage is it. So that's why you know have you have to know the stages and the classification. These are the Waldenstrom stages, and then it may be asked that, yes, this is, uh, say, stage three. 
how long will it persist? Because that is directly bearing with your treatment. Okay, these are the pictures and the explanation from the textbooks, of course. Smaller ossific nucleus and mild flattening in case of initial state, that is a increased radio density. Widening of the medial joint space from the inflammation, from the hypergrowth of the cartilage. And in case, some cases, subchondral fracture, metaphyseal cyst in some other cases. Then comes the fragmentation stage, that is the stage of uh, resorption. And uh, the radiolucencies appear in the ossific nucleus. And those radiolucencies can become uh, like a fissure and then fragmented appearance of the nucleus comes on. The head gets further lateralized. Demarcation of the central radio dense fragment that is the sequestrum here. Then comes the reossification state. Body tries to heal by pushing the vessels there and forming the new bones. These are the new bones in the medial and the lateral aspects of the femoral head. Center and the anterior aspects of the head are last to be ossified. Those are visible only in frog lateral views or other scans. Then the radio dense fragment gradually disappears and incorporated into the normal bone. And this is the residual stage, hill stage. In the hill stage, the head can remain deformed or it can remain uh, globular. Density becomes normal, shape uh, is variable and then there can be a restoration of the clavicular pattern. If it is a bilateral, it's a rare thing in only 10 to 15%, 20%. If in the same stage, bilateral, then you look out for skeletal dysplasia and look at the hands, spine, and the knee joint. If it is asynchronous, it is perthes. That is, two sides are on different stages. You see in this MRI, this is totally black, and this has started revascularizing. So there are different stages. That is why they are not a feature of multiple epithelial dysplasia. Classifications, I mean, from the theory, but you have an excess in, in front of you. So the examiner may ask, what is this classification? What is its scatteral? What is its Stolberg? Uh, if it is a hill one. And uh, what is the herring classification of this particular child? You know about Salter Thompson? More than 50% or less than 50% B or A, very simple, can be applied. But the problem is that it is very transient. This uh, crescent is visible only about 30% of the cases. And if the frog lateral is missed, then it, the, even the crescent sign is present, even if the crescent sign is present, it can be missed because it is in the anterior part. And in AP view, it is overlapped with the posterior healthy part of the head. For fragmentation stage, uh, the cattle group, groups one to four, that is 25%, 50%, 70%, and 100% of the area fragmented, easy to uh, remember. Uh, basically, it is related to the outcome. More area fragmented means outcome is worse. Basically, the head becomes uh, more flattened and more deformed. Can be applied only after maximum fragmentation. So fragmentation is a progress. I think we have lost GG, is it? No, no, he is, uh, his, his internet service is getting shocking. GG, can you hear us? I, th I think, I think GG, the internet is not there. Yeah, he was doing with the mobile, you know. I think it was wonderfully going back to history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard about Parthis after so many years. I think chat box is a question. Yeah, Rajiv, can you go through chat box? A chat box is a question. 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 A ch
No, no, Pawar has left. left. No, no, he is not there. He is not there. Okay. 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 Next, next, next case. Okay. 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 ियस <laughs> परीक्षा फाइंडिंग सब आज सुंदर केस তো ইউজুয়ালি ওই কেসগুলো আমরা দেই না পরীক্ষায় কারণ ওগুলো ডিএনবি পরীক্ষার জন্য বা এফআরসিএস বা অন্য পরীক্ষার জন্য ওগুলো রাখা থাকে তো আমরা যেটা দেই সেটা হলো এই কেস দেই যেখানে তোমার এই যেটা জিজি দেখাচ্ছিল যে গেটার টোপেন্ডার মাইগ্রেটর হায়ার আপ হয়েছে থিক এন্ড ব্রড এন্ড রে আছে তো এখানে অনেক হিস্টোরিক্যাল অ্যাস্পেক্ট আর কি জিজি বলল যে 108 বছর হয়েছে পারসিস উদযাপন করা হচ্ছে অনুসম অনেক কথা বলল मुखोपाध्याय मोर मुखोपाध्याल जिज्ञेस कर
ग्रेट मुखोपाध्याय द लीजेंड ऑफ इंडिया हां विष्णु मुखोपाध्याय असे आम्ही काही भाबला हां तो अकाउंट कथा छ की ए सब जिनिस गुलो तो भूले गए छे ना मते आगामी प्रजन्म ए जनो माझे माझे गुलो बोला होचे तमाते जाय जनो हमरा एक प्रोग्राम शुरू करू छे अकाउंट डब्ल्यू बी ओ ते जे लीजेंड्स ऑफ पावर माने लीजेंड्स ऑफ पावर कंट्री हां दिलीप दा जेडा स्टूडेंट जानते चाय जे एटा मेथोडिकल अप्रोच मोर मॉडर्न अप्रोच टू पार्टीज एटा किछु आछे ना की एग्जैक्टली मॉडर्न मॉडर्न अप्रोच होलो जे तुमके सब समय हम बोली जे सिक्स कोनी वेन मार्क थ्री सब दिस सोसाइटी Six morning and bar three substitution is very important in in the case of heap examination. Six morning and bar so by jane. But three substitution sign jane na. Three substitution sign er mudhe actor lo vascular sign of nara. Jeta ko important ekhen a pulsation jeta tumi dekhe ek ekta board hoye galle pulsation ta onno rokom lagbe dissimilar. Eta galle actor. Dono na bolo tenderness. Tenderness in early stage. थार्ड सब जी जी हिस्टोरिकल रिस्ट भलो जी 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 ब्रॉडबैंड साइट वी हैव सॉल्व्ड आई थिंक नाउ इन विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल और व्हाट हां जी जी हमारा शेयर कर रहे हैं स्टार्टिंग शेयरिंग राइट नो नो यू आर यू आर यू आर विजिबल ओनली विल स्क्रीन शेयर स्क्रीन शेयर जी जी जे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मास्टर तार क्षेत्र में एकदम हॉट है ठीक ना है। नो आई रिंग रैंक द पीपल आप नेटवर्क नेटवर्क तो हाथ नहीं ना सर। सॉरी सर अभी दिया देता हूँ ऐसा कर करते करते हो गया चल। जी तब किस बात है? तो things happen। so uh, catheter formulated the radiological head at risk signs also you already know the uh, clinical head at head at risk signs so uh, but all of those signs have no, don't have similar uh, prognostic significance that the PGT is must Uh, learn that calcification lateral to the epiphysis, and the last one, that is the uh, fifth one here, is the uh, most clinically uh, ultimately significant. So V-shaped defect, horizontal physis, and those um, gauges signs, those are not very significant, right? In the Herring's classification, the lateral pillars collapse. The final result. is about similar to the result of stool bud that is why it is best among the classifications in this regard the final prognostication but again relevant only after the maximum fragmentation and as we know the disease is having stages it can progress so should you wait just to uh, classify it if the uh, lateral pillar is say uh, more than 50% now but the stage is progressing Shall we wait till the maximum fragmentation to occur just to classify? That is a new point. And these are the pictures. If the patient comes to you in this particular stage, then it is fine that it is already presented as a group B or group C or group B by C. Then stool bud. It is the status after maturity. We have basically three outcomes in Parkinson's disease. One outcome is after the arrestation of the disease. That is about two to two point five years. after the onset of the symptoms then at the maturity and then at the adulthood so uh, after maturity what happens what remains there stool bud one is the round head is the normal hip that's the best possible outcome the patient will not feel anything will do normal everything normal then there is the round head but there is a large head coxa magna in the three type there is a mushroom shaped head again it's a coxa magna in the four flat head but it is congruent to the acetabulum and in the fifth group flat head 
but it's not in current going. If you are asked that how spherical is the head, how do you measure? Then the answer is there is a template called Mose template. Mose template should be superimposed on the X-ray and then you know about the sphericity. If the examiner asks that, how do you know how extruded is the head? Because that is important. We have already seen that if it is more than 20% extruded, then the result is not good and you have to actively treat it if possible. So this is the classical thing, CE angle of Wilberg. But the problem is in a deformed head, the measuring the center of the head is slightly difficult and it may not be corroborated with the center of the acetabula. So that is why there is another measurement that from the uh, medial side, you measure the acetabulum, that is the acetabular head index, that is called the acetabular head index. This is the acetab whole acetabulum and this is the part of the acetabulum, which is uncovered. So basically covered versus uncovered, that is acetabular head index. And the RMI is this by this, that's just the opposite, okay? Now you see the difference here. In this head, you can have determine the center of the head and then CE angle can be measured. But in this head, where is the center of the head? It is not corroborating with the center of the acetabulum also. So you cannot back calculate. In these cases, you have to take uh, cognizance of the problem and then go for the AHI. How overgrown is the GT? We all know that the greater trochanteric -like overgrowth is a problem, <coughs> cosmetic problem, functional problem. And how overgrown? Same thing. Uh, this is the articulotrochanteric distance or even the acetabulotrochanteric distance. This is the uh, much more reliable measurement than the centrotrochanteric distance, uh, distance because the center cannot be measured, cannot be determined in many cases. Then the examiner asks, what is this sign? This is called a sagging rope. You know the prognostic significance if the sagging rope is already there, uh, it's not uh, good for the patient and it has already matured, I think. Then the prognostic Factors, we've already enumerated um, prognostic factors in front of the examiner, but then he'll, he may ask that what are the most significant prognostic factors? You see, those three pluses are age and the stage of <clears throat> state of lateral pillar, lateral pillar. And uh, the second, you know, the two pluses are lateral calcification, subluxation, and the extent of necrosis and the mobility. Mobility is only the clinical sin clinically determin determinable uh, factor, other and the age is also that, but other factors are radiological, <clears throat> okay? Gauge sign and transverse horizontal uh, orientation of the epiphyseal plate, those are not very prognostically significant. They are there in the list of uh, uh, head at risk, but not prognostically significant. Overall, if there is a, uh, if there is a, these are the um, scenario, then there are bad prognosis. For example, more than six years when the patient presents first, more head involved, for example, Salter Thompson type B or Catterall three or four or heading B, C or B or C, B and C, and head at risk signs are present, these two particularly, the subluxation and the lateral calcification. Do you want to treat and why? These questions will inevitably come in your examination table and you'll have to answer logically. Uh, examiner will help you that it is a self-limiting disease. Why are you treating? To prevent deformity of the head, that is the answer, which happens in some patients. LCPD is one of the most controversial subjects in orthopedics, so there can be uh, disagreement between you and the examiner, but don't argue. The 50-50 rule is there that about 50% untreated will have uh, disabling osteoarthritis in about 50 years of age. So what is the rationally? So this is the rationally uh, because in stage <coughs> 2B and uh, 3A, the femoral head is more prone for deformation. After that, the head becomes uh, more solid. The type of types of treatment are preventive and the remedial and the salvage. Preventive is uh, containment, unloading, and then there are experimental treatments. What is experimental today? Maybe the established treatment next year for by these phosphonates and anti inflammatory to reduce the lateral migration. You see, the migration is the root cause of all the problems. So, and this is the beautiful picture stage 1A, 1B, and 2A. You have preventive intervention. In 3A and 2B, you have remedial surgery, and the rest of the things are salvage surgery. Basically, age less than six years, go for the 
for the clinical examination, if it is fully mobile, monitor six monthly for two years, then annually. If the range of motion is restricted, adductor spasm, et cetera, et cetera, restore the range of motion by uh, gentle physio, again, monitor. And if there is extrusion starting, don't delay, go for containment. Six years to 12 years, again, get rid of stif stiffness. If the patient presents already with hearing B, B, Y, C, and C, will do better with containment than no containment. It has been proved, so go for containment. And how do you ensure that is a concentric reduction in acetabulum? The answer is arthrography. In arthrography, you see this is a bad looking <clears throat> CT scan, but when the patient was in arthrography, you see there is a thick, nice, rounded uh, uh, cartilage, cartilage cap. Controvers uh, con uh, contrary to this here, you see there is a hinge abduction. So the treatment of these are different. If you try to contain this, the patient will have more problem than not contain. How do you contain? The answer is sir, by rotating the femur, for example, in brace, a cast, or surgery, or by rotating the pelvis by doing osteotomies. Whereas the rotation osteotomy, the, and this is a modified whereas the rotation osteotomy in which you medialize to reduce the malaxis and the valgus of the knee joint. This is Salters. The PGT is already know all, all those things, but just to remember, recapitulate, this is the triple annular osteotomy. This is better than Salters in certain aspects. For example, this does not put too much of pressure on the uh, head and it covers more anteriorly as well as laterally compared to Salters. And when hinge abduction is present, this is another case, there's a big bump there, hinge abduction. If you try to uh, keep this head inside the acetabulum, it will only uh, go for uh, more medial displacement, so go for this thing, valgus uh, osteotomy. It basically, you are making it more unstable, but you are bringing this relatively uninvolved area onto the weight-bearing part. So, when do you contain? The answer is, sir, when, as soon as it is indicated, don't we don't delay. As soon as we take the decision for containment, we don't delay further. For example, this is deferred, and in just four months, this happened. Okay. The prerequisite, of course, is good range of motion. We all always stress on that. Clinical examination will find that, and hinge abduction. No hinge abduction. Clinically, it is very difficult to determine. Arthrogram is the answer. Um, it helps. What does it? How does it help? It helps sphericity at the healing stage. There is a term called biological plasticity. You can apply that to in front of the examiner, but you have to explain what is biological plasticity then. It reduces the chance of the coxa magna and disease duration is reduced by femoral osteotomy. It is controversial, but in some, uh, but some evidence is there. For example, one eight year boy in 98, and this is the, uh, whereas the rotation osteotomy, this is not the ideal one because it has lateralized this is the modified one, but the result was good. And this is the ideal uh, osteotomy with medial displacement so that the axis remains the same. The problem with this kind of osteotomies, you have to remember pros and cons of all those osteotomies you must remember because one or, one or two of those may be put forward as a question in your X-ray table also, even if not in your examination table. So there can be bad results. This is called the coxa magna, big head here, and coxa profunda definition you must know. Then this is called coxa irregularis, uh, Stolberg type 4. And this is a specimen we took out from uh, case, this case for a THR. You see that this is the mushrooming type of head. Okay. Uh, in short, this is the basic scenario in uh, Perthes disease, what you face in your examinations clinically and your theory paper and your X-ray paper. Thank you. Wonderful, GT. Um, so um, does anybody have anything to illustrate any more or add anything more? Yes, sir. Ask Dr. G.N. Matthew, sir. He was co-faculty with G.N. Matthew, sir. You want no, to no. add something for PC residents, sir, please, sir. No, actually, this is uh, more of theoretical. Is there any yeah. case here? Actually, kono case near discussion? Particular case? 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 Case?
actually discussing with a particular case is not very beneficial at this stage because the practical examination is nearing up and that particular case may not be present in in their uh, examination scenario so it is better to go for a wide spectrum of the wide spectrum of what can happen in the examination table and what can be the which could be the questions put forward by the examiner and what are the traps on those uh, questions and the side questions that was my motto of uh, presenting this one very good very good so uh, G, 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 what has Robert. changed in last 15 years in parties even for examination purpose sorry what has what changed has changed in, in last 15 what years even for examination yeah, purpose yes. uh see if we go for uh, topic wise predisposing factors some predisposing factors have been discovered and in one japanese paper they insisted that there is a 35 times preponderance or uh, risk ratio in uh, first degree relatives of a lcpd which is not yet supported by the registries but they have maybe uh, in 10 years that will be established we don't know the second is the etiological factors including the protein c and protein s and uh, the biological solution of it the mechanical solution we all know those operations etc but whether the mechanical mechanical solutions really affect the biology that has not been answered people are working on that these phosphonates bone morphogenic proteins those are uh, bnp is a very costly affair and uh, it's in the experimental stage but today's experiment maybe uh, next decades established thing especially if the cost comes down and the results become more consistent okay and then the uh, last 15 if you say about last 20 25 years then the braces have almost been universally discarded it is uh, very difficult and uh, demoralizing for the patient to bear uh, uh, very restricting constraining orthosis for 2 years or more than 2 years rather than having an operation in which he had to be admitted for 5 days and stitches removed in 2 weeks so those are uh, the basic changes as far the clinical examination is concerned we are more cognizant about the harmful effect of hinge abduction we are more cognizant about the harmful effect of stiffness the stiffness the more, if you do anything do any containment non containment monitoring anything if the hip becomes stiff then the result is not going to be very um, happy for the patient so stiffness is extremely important and the monitoring the follow ups uh, previously the people used to follow up more often with radiology nowadays there is a concern about the harmful effects of radiology also so we tend to minimize the radiological exposure of a growing child i think we can start with our third one yeah we can yeah thank you ji ji we'll go to the third one yeah Sabasachi is moderator for third case. I think. Uh, Did you finish the answer? So Sabasachi is busy somewhere, so we can. Start all right, all right. I think. No. I think Rakesh, that you can moderate this session also, please. And yeah. okay. uh, Asen Gupta, sir. G G G. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. So, so third case discussion, sir. It would be your uh, third hip case. I think it was for. Uh, uninvited fracture neck of femur sir do you have any presentation sir sir i think presentation is not proper there are a lot to share yes sir, my pgt will present all right sir so please ask your pgt to share his screen sir so that we can have a good interactive and, session uh, i like to uh, that uh, i have pre- yeah his door of his ear yes sir yes, this will be interactive Yes, sir. I have formulated this in a manner that the usually the PG, PG, PGTs will can relate themselves with. Uh, it is in the form of a long case. I was you, uh, actually uh, informed that way that I should I should present it in yes, the form, sir, of, yes. form of a is, long case. Yes, yes, that is that is because in virtual platform PGT will be presenting. Yeah. Yes, and I would expect the examiners over here who are senior teachers to interrupt him whenever they please and ask him questions. the questions that will be relevant to the examiners and most of the examiners i think will be appearing for the finals a few days from now are already yes. here in the session and they might might be having questions they are also at liberty to ask us questions yes sir which i think we will try to address yes sir 
Dr. G. N. Mathi sir is also here, sir. Gopinath Mathi sir is Dr. Ranjit Bhatto sir I also think, joined. Uh, Gorav, you here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gorav, start sharing your screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fantastic. It will be an interactive session. Gopinath Bhatto is here. I think we will try to. Hello. Gaurav, yes, sir. Start sharing your screen. Yes, sir. I have started and sharing. Is it audible? Long... Yes. yes, sir. The video is presented in the format of a long case. You will be. Uh, you are audible, but you are not. Only if your video is off, I think you will be able to be speaking clearly. Only if your video is off, I think. Sen Gupta sir, uh, say some issue with your. Officer yes. Sen Gupta, uh, your audio quality is not very good, I think. Yeah, so if he puts off his video, I think it will come better. Yeah. The audio will become better. So we can start right now. I think Mathi sir is there, Dr. Rajit Bhatto sir is there, and yeah, Sen Gupta sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Okay, Gora, we can. start yes, yes sir uh, so you have been provided long case it is a hip case uh, and you have been 40 minutes 30 minutes for examination mark all the prominences you are going to present your case at the beginning so you can start what is your case i am not asking you what is your diagnosis i am yes, asking sir. what is your case yes sir uh, sir sir is my voice uh, audible Yes, Gaurav, you are audible. Please start. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, sir, this is a 45-year-old gentleman who was laborer by profession. He complains of inability to bear weight on his left lower limb since 1.5 years, and he also complained of a short lower limb. The he according to him the shortening has been according to him the shortening has been gradually progressive and has reached the current state. It is associated with on and off pain, which is restricted to the left hip. without radiation it is dull aching type and aggravated on exertion and relieved on rest he is currently unable to walk unassisted and has difficulties in performing activities of daily living when i asked him about the past history he said he had a road traffic accident 1.5 years back and had sustained injury to the left hip for which he underwent surgery following the surgery he was bed bound for 2 months and then he was allowed weight bearing but he had persistent pain after the surgery for which he underwent a second surgery for implant removal after 6 months the implant was removed after 6 months following this he has been walking without weight bearing and with the help of crutches the wounds have healed the surgical wounds have healed well at both the surgeries on further invest on further asking there was no significant past medical illness there was no history of repeat trauma the patient is non alcoholic but smokes cigarette occasionally there is no signs of infection at present on in, on examination uh, uh, the gait examination was not possible as the patient was unable to stand we will walk. stop you here gorov yeah, yes yeah, sir yeah. gorov yes sir please stop yes, here yes sir examination will we will proceed to examination later yes sir now from the history yes sir what is the occupation of the patient so he was laborer by occupation have you asked the occupation yes sir he was laborer by occupation have you asked him yes sir hello hello no what kind of laborer is a farmer or is a load carrier no sir uh, sir, he, sir he 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 used to uh, work uh, is it important to you about the occupation he was accustomed to? yes sir uh, so he was a carpenter sir uh, sir he carpenter yes sir hmm so why is it important sir uh, to know about the act, uh, about his requirements uh, about his day to day daily activities and the need of uh, 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 whether he needs to carry heavy loads or he needs to squat or he needs to sit cross legged during his to understand the demand over the under heap. yes sir to understand the demand to demand over the heap various uh, this uh, uh, vocational uh, Attachment of person is actually examined. Uh, so this demand, demand over the hip. Suppose one is requiring full range of motion of the hip. Some is requiring sedentary work. So getting very little walking or little standing, only sitting job. 
so there is has got to the demand over the hip is important understand yes the demand uh, decreases with the advance of the age demand increase decreases with the advance of the age. Yeah, there is one question can i ask one question yeah yeah gorov yes sir you, you said there is no history of significant past medical illness what yes, are the illnesses sir. which you have sought for we have asked from the question from the patient because illness because yes, if if you think there is a road traffic accident there is a fracture of the hip what yes, could be the fracture whether it will be a neck femur fracture or token rig fracture yes. most of the cases in a neck femur fracture it happens in a post menopausal woman with a very trivial injury yes sir so so you are absolutely sure there is a traumatic fracture which could, could have been a pathological fracture something like that if yes, it is considered a pathological fracture yes, sir. what significant medical illness you have asked for the from the patient sir i have asked about his uh, medical issue yes sir yes sir is a very good question you know very good question yes sir sir uh, uh, about the medical illness sir i asked him about any comorbidities whether he takes any medication for hypertension or diabetes or has he taken any steroids or uh, any any medication for respiratory distress any time uh, so uh, he said he has never taken any medication till now in his life and uh, he has taken uh, some uh, pain medications Uh, and calcium tablets in the past okay any any other any other thing have you and taken any history of bleeding through natural orifices like hematemesis hemoptysis melina hematuria abnormal these are male patient of course by in case of yes. female patient abnormal uterine bleeding do you think these are these questions should be asked yes sir uh, sir what is uh, relevant Yes, sir. Sir, he said that there, there was no past history uh, 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 like this. But uh, after the trauma, also, sir, uh, there was uh, no history of uh, bleeding per uh, bleeding per rectum or bleeding per urethra. Uh, Why these questions are relevant, sir? What in you... case of uh, sir, if there is an uh, associated pelvic fracture, no. then there may be uh, bleeding per urethra, no, and no. Uh, no, no, uh, there may be injury to the, the urethra. Fracture is a trivial uh, trauma. Wait, you have taken to be granted. There's a traumatic fracture, like whatever, but it yes. could have been pathological fracture. Yes. In case of pathological fracture, do you think there is any relevance of taking these histories? Uh, sir, uh, like bleeding per urethra, uh, the hematemesis, hemoptysis, hematuria. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, maybe the, there can be a uh, secondary metastasis, uh, which may have. uh resulted in weakening of the bone sir listen 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 i think after, just before touching the patient after taking the history yes sir in case of dnb they will ask you some diagnosis what could be the diagnosis these yes. are your provisional diagnosis three or four provisional diagnosis yes sir. now it's a pyramidal approach they will have to go by the process of elimination after gl survey there could be some diagnosis excluded then after total examination there is some you come to your provisional diagnosis okay sir. so after taking the history only yes sir. what do you think this is a traumatic fracture yes sir it could be a trochanteric fracture it could be a neck femur fracture okay yes sir. yes sir then you go for the history of present illness past illness family history personal history go on like this yes sir. okay so please carry on Yes. Sir. So, what is Gorav? What is your impression from the history that you have taken so far? Hello. What, yes, sir. What is your impression that this case about the case you are dealing with? Sir, what is uh, this case? sir, this is a uh, sir, this is a post-traumatic. Uh, sir, he has a history of road traffic uh, uh, injury. So, I am suspecting either a trochanteric fracture or a neck femur fracture or a acetabular or pelvic fracture, sir, or posterior hip dislocation. With acetabular fracture, with pelvic fracture, sir. So any any of sir, the possibilities? Yes, sir. Any of the possibilities. I'm suspicious. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you you have examined. Yes, sir. On continue uh, examination. Yes, sir. On proceed. local. Yes, sir. On local examination of the hip, the gate. Uh, I was not able to assess the gate as the patient was not able to stand or walk without support. From inspection, the inspection was done in lying down position. Uh, 
the attitude of the lower limb uh, the so lower limb uh, one second don't you think there is any importance of general survey yes sir there is importance of general survey yes sir but uh, you sir, didn't uh, general survey sir actually so, i was told uh, to uh, finish the case in uh, 40 minutes okay, so that okay. uh, so th that is fine that is fine you proceed but as in as you are proceeding in the format of examination yes i think you should not miss any step this yes. will send out a wrong message okay yes, so after sir. after all the elements of history is over yes sir you should go in for general survey yes sir. so you touch down a few points of general survey that you have taken and then proceed to local examination right. yes sir right. uh, on said on general survey the patient was alert conscious and cooperative uh, the 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 build was uh, the moderate and the nutrition was adequate there was a uh, pulse his blood pressure was uh, 124 by 84 and the pulse uh, was 82 beats per minute there was a uh, uh, there was no pallor ectrus cyanosis clubbing or edema and uh, the neck veins were not engorged okay, and move on, uh, move on to local able... examination yes sir on uh, local examination the gate was not please, please I... move on to local hmm. yes sir on local examination i was not able to assess the gate as the patient was not able to stand uh, and for uh, further uh, i i inspected the patient in lying down position the attitude of the limb the lower limb was in flexion abduction and the left patella and the medial malleola were at higher level compared to the opposite side on inspection from the fr front the left anterior superior iliac spine was at a higher level there was wasting of thigh muscles and there was apparent shortening of the left lower limb on in on examination from the side there was no exaggerated lumbar lordosis and there was a heel surgical scar measuring around 12 cm seen over the greater trochanter extending distally on examination from the back i was not able to see any mass and the there was some gluteal wasting present good sir uh, sir so no. yeah. yes sir so now uh, i moved on to palpation in the loop one thing missed uh, just i am telling you huh? yes sir. is is important regarding the heel you know heel touching the ground and standing and level of the heel is in lying down Heels touching the ground and standing, yes. and level of the heels in lying down. So you have told about the medial malleolus, but you should say heels, heels of the patient. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Aliruddha, do you have any pictures of the patient? Clinical. No, picture? I don't have it. Gorav has it, but it is there in the end. He will show. He will show at the end. Yeah, yeah. But I think simultaneously it's better. Yeah. Now inspection. You said you yes. have inspected. Did not inspect. Standing, you inspected supine, bit from the front, from the side, from this side, from back. the back. Yes, sir. Audio is not good. Audio is so, actually di disturbing. Is is the importance of is yes? Is the importance of inspection from the front also? Sir, pardon, sir. Uh, sir, sorry, sir. The I am not able to uh, hear you, sir. अरे ये तो कॉल कैसे कैसे जाते हैं? अरे ये तो अरे ये तो मतलब टाइम टाइम अरे ये तो कॉल कैसे कैसे जाते हैं? अच्छा तुम ये भी जाओ और वो भी जाओ. Continue. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Go on, palpation. Sir, uh, on palpation, the inspectory findings were confirmed. There was uh, no local rise of temperature. and the anterior hip point was tender the anterior superior iliac spine on left side was at a higher level compared to the right side and uh, on vascular sign of narath was negative on palpatory branch the greater trochanter was proximally migrated and but there was no broadening or thickening of the greater trochanter but the surface of the greater trochanter was irregular there was no scar tenderness and the scar is mobile on palpation from posteriorly no mass was felt sir so uh, further moving on to movements so on movement uh, i examined both the uh, examine the movements of left and right hip in active and passive go to go to please please yes, please please yes, sir. Yes, sir. so here the patient has already been operated upon yes, once sir. or twice 
Yes, sir. The so patient, regarding... uh, sir, patient was operated twice, sir. Twice. Yes. Sir. So regarding the examination, local examination, one slide in local examination covering everything, I think it is less than adequate. So we need to know much more in have much more information about the soft tissues as well as the bones. So what yes. are the soft tissue palpation you did over here? You thought relevant to do over here? Yes, sir. sir. I palpated the scarpa strangle. Yes, that is a yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, sir, I also palpated the iliac fossa, uh, and uh, I searched for. Uh, I also palpated the iliac fossa. And sir, the I palpated the skin over the swelling. The uh, skin, the sc there was uh, the wound had healed, sir, uh, nicely, and there was no scar tenderness was present, and I was able to. The skin over the uh, swelling was skin over the uh, fracture was mobile, sir. There was no any scar. There was no scar tenderness, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you should say about the length of the scar mark. Is it yes, ten sir. inch, five inch, yes, two inch? Yes, sir. Like yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How much? Then, then sir, there was other? 12 centimeters scar present 12 over the uh, okay. yes, sir, over the greater trochanter and uh, extending distally. Okay. Any other soft tissues? You said anterior spine is high up. Yes. Sir. So any other soft tissues that you are supposed to palpate? Anteriorly, medially, yeah, yeah, laterally. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Sir, uh, the examiner will ask because next next is uh, that they will ask about the movement. And yes. They will catch you. Sir, I palpated the adductor muscles. Uh, whether any adductor tightness was present or not. It was there. Yes, sir. So what did you find? Sir, there was adductor tightness, sir. You did not mention it? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. In palpation, you did, did not mention about yes, the adductor muscles? Yeah. Three soft tissue signs. Always I tell you, three soft tissue signs, six bony landmarks in palpation. Okay, sir. What about Do tenderness? Uh, sir, uh, uh, the, uh, sir, I palpated the I uh, the bony landmarks anterior superior iliac spine. There was no tenderness in the anterior or the anterior superior iliac spine. The uh, greater trochanter on palpating the greater trochanter on deep palpation there was uh, pain. Uh, I performed the bitrochanteric compression test. Uh, there was slight pain on the left side. Uh, there was pain on the left side, and uh, sir, there was uh, tenderness over the scarpa strangle, sir. Which part of scarpa strangle? Uh, sir, uh, near the base region of the scarpa strangles. So my question should mm -hmm. be more specific here. Yes. Did you find anterior hip point tender or not? Yes, sir. The anterior hip point was tender, sir. Why are you not mentioning it? Sir, I had mentioned it in the palpation, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Mm. Oh, bola chile, bola chile. Bola yeah. chile. So anterior bola hip point chile, is tender. Bitochondric is also tender. Mm. Huh? And trochanteric tenderness is also the, present to some extent, is it? And there is trochanteric thickening, broadening, thickening sir, and tenderness. Uh, sir, broad, sir broad. there is not much broadening or thickening of trochanter, uh -huh. but the surface was irregular, sir. Irregular. Irregular, but it is yes. tender or not? Hmm. Sir, on deep palpation, he was uh, complaining of some pain. Because sir, there there was, was, uh, you told some implants were there. Na? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, is there any tenderness or not? If the tenderness is there, it is more significant. Yes, sir. Tickets. <coughs> Tickets. Okay, okay, proceed. Okay. Okay, 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 fine. Can, I, can I say a few words? Yes. Bolo, bolo. Because this case is you are basically doing a clinical presentation of a case without the patient. Mm. Okay. So we think we should discuss about the clinical methods and approach here. After already, general already. survey, in this case, in this case, we see your approach to the patient, approach to the patient and the elicitation of clinical science. And interpretation of clinical science. Before approaching the patient after GL survey, he must yes. do maintain the normal protocol that patient should be inspected in a farm coach in a broad well illuminated room in a in a comfortable atmosphere after taking proper consent and socially permissible clinical exposure. Because for nowadays, before first you see doesn't do the approach. How to examine the patient? Yeah, bah, bah, this bah. Link, you, you should be, you should, it should be done. After that, you will start inspection, palpation, movement, measurement. Yeah, you, you are right. You are right. Very but, right. Actually, uh, you, if you have seen the PALS, uh, AK PAL presentation, 
he has covered up all these things ha eh? this concentrating hard cow jo farm how to see the lumber logos all these things covered up by ak pal anand pal in the first lecture he has to elaborately elaborately one hour elaborate but this is a clinical case presentation ha ekene ekene chobi da ekta chobi dile bhalo you should follow this normal thik ache ekene ekene ঠিক আছে এটা বলছে একটু শেষ করতে পালপেশনে কি করবে কি পালপেশন করবে হ্যালো 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 পালপেশন পালপেশনটা বলো হ্যাঁ স্যার স্যার দা ইন্সপেক্টর ফাইন্ডিংস ওয়ার কনফার্ম স্যার there was no local rise of temperature the anterior hip point was tender and the anterior superior iliac spine on the left side higher level compared to the right side the vascular sign of narath was negative and on palpatory branch the greater trochanter was proximally migrated on the left side compared to the right side. there was no broadening or thickening of the greater trochanter but the surface was irregular. there was no scar tenderness and the scar was mobile on palpation from posterior side there was no mass was the mass was not felt sir okay uh, so moving on to movements so I have examined the uh, movements of both left and right hips i looked for both active and passive movements and whether any pain was associated with the movements or not so in the, on the left hip the flash the flexion was 0 to 60 degrees and on the whereas on the right side the flexion was uh, was normal so it was around from 0 to 120 degrees uh, active active flexion and passive flexion on the left hip was from 0 to 90 degrees the extension of the one minute one minute yes. why do you need to test for active and passive separately in such a case when do you need to uh, examine separately active range and passive range uh, what is the question sir uh, the passive range uh, sir if there is in, if there is any tightness no. of the uh, muscles or no, the no, muscle no 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 checking for active range and passive range separately is indicated only in paralytic seizure of or a non cooperative patient okay sir in an adult patient who is alert uh, and cooperative etc we know the we need to know the range of movement possible at the hip joint okay sir okay okay sir so in hip examination whatever movement you will tell you will tell the passive most most okay, we are concerned with the range of movement possible in the joint isn't it yes sir so if it, for hip case we don't need to say active and passive together. or uh, the adduction in left hip was from 20 to 45 degrees and uh, no abduction was not possible sir on the right hip the adduction was from 0 to 40 degrees on the right hip the abduction was from 0 to 40 degrees on both the hips the internal rotation were from 0 to 50 degrees and external rotation were from 0 to 60 degrees from 0 to 60 degrees <laughs> হ্যালো sir so the uh, flexion was from 0 to 60 degrees and the, there was fixed adduction deformity uh, the adduction was from 20 to 45 degrees and the range of adduction was from 20 no, I, to 45 I, degrees i i i, I want i want to mention i want to 
গৌরব is the range of motion and the deformity the only things that we see in movement don't we no, see sir, there was the relationship a... with pain don't we see yes, any sir. other yes, pain yes, yes, yes. and you are not mentioning on this and, and crepitus because he is supposedly yeah. a non-inertial structure yes, yes definitely sir there was not mentioning uh... crepitus muscle spasm neither you are mentioning relationship with pain neither you are mentioning the end points or 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 it may be painless movement if it is a pakka non in that is so the movements of so the movements were painless and uh, oh so movements were all painless all painless and do you feel any capital during uh, movement uh, so yes sir there was yes sir there was capital on movement sir there are capital and still there is no pain at all no sir there was no pain sir apparent Pinter. shortening and true shortening i saw the patient three rakam three rakam measurement ta chhe tai na yes sir it's all apparent measurement and true measurement that is special measurement yes sir three measurement bolo sir the uh, apparent shortening was of 4 cm and the true shortening was of 2 cm the uh, also there was muscle wasting of the left thighs which were uh, which was 3 cm and the brain's triangle on um, on drawing the brain's triangle the base was reduced by 2 cm on the left side and get the right side to disturb hoche so which muscle wasting is more important for a hip case i was i muscle wasting or a buttock muscle wasting uh sir both the wasting sir buttock to bolo ni na wasting to bolo ni ni hip case wasting of the buttock muscle is more important yes মেনশন থাকবে the tendin edinburgh test was not carried out as the patient was not able to stand sir the on drawing the nilatans line the greater trochanter was proximal to the uh, nilatans line and uh, the on drawing the shoemaker's line the shoemaker uh, uh, the line met on the opposite side below the umbilicus the information people sir uh, there was pro- yes sir so there was proximal migration of the greater trochanter hmm Yes. Sir, uh, the shortening of the limb for 2 cm, 2 shortening. Yes. yes, sir. There was 2 shortening of 2 cm. Did it be supratrochanteric? Yes, sir. It was uh-huh. supratrochanteric shortening. On drawing the brine strangle, the base was reduced by 2 cm. So, your provisional diagnosis. Come on. Your provisional diagnosis is key. আমি 
sir yes sir the abdomen sir the uh, sir it was uh, painless and non tender sir the abdomen Achha, was sir tumhare provisional diagnosis ki sir this is a case of post traumatic post operative non union fractured neck of femur of 1 and 1/2 years old duration in a 45 year old gentleman with inability to bear weight for the same duration yeah side bol lena age bol lena Yes, sir. The free adduction was from twenty to forty-five degrees. Twenty-five and no adduction. Okay. No, no. Okay. 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 following which uh, he was not able to uh, uh, he wo- com- he complained of walk and he was unable to walk and so he had a surgery in uh, somewhere uh, then uh, after which he uh, did, uh, there was implant removal was done after 6 months and uh, uh, following which he is bed bound and he is not able to walk uh, then on ex- on examination there was a fixed adduction deformity of uh, 20 degrees with a true so- supra trochanteric shortening of 2 cm with a positive telescopic sign hmm. hence uh, my uh, so how will you confirm your diagnosis sir i would uh, like to order a x ray i would uh, order a digital x ray of pelvis with bilateral hip joint in ap and lateral view and a traction internal rotation view digital x a traction internal rotation view of left hip joint sir. डिजिटल डिजिटल एक्सरे एक्सरे बोल 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 रहे रहे हैं हैं सर 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 ना 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 पावर ना 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 पावर पावर वी आर यूज्ड टू राइटिंग ओनली ठीक है ठीक है रिगार्डिंग द बोन इंफेक्शन और कथा एक पेरिस्टल रिएक्शन आछे बच्चो है यस यस सेशंस तो सुन दे हमरा ऑर्डिनरी एक्स पे बेसी पाई और ऑर्डिनरी एक्स पे आर नॉट अवेलेबल इन द गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल्स आल्सो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट पहले आजकल गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल हो पाओ जाछे ना सही बोलछ तो वेरी डिफिकल्ट अच्छा पहले तुम्ही अपन एक्स रे देखाओ तो एक्स रे रीडिंग की करे पोर हां एक्स रे रीडिंग है Sir, this, sir, this was the X-ray. Uh, How to read the X-ray? Yes, sir. This is uh, oh, a... Professor Majumdar. Professor Majumdar, Delhi. Professor Majumdar, and I think uh, Ranjit Dai is also there. I think the students, those who are presenting, whenever you are presenting these cases, at least you put some clinical photos. I think the if you are narrating just no, like no. I will say it. I have time now. No, I should not do it. Okay, the X-ray reading check will be done. No, 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 no. You just listen to. You just listen to. Whenever he is presenting something, like long case, at least some clinical photographs of that patient should be there. Otherwise, the, there is no point in presenting the cases uh, like a long case. ठीक बोले चो के बोला हुए चे वो लास्ट टे देखा भी बोल चे. Yes, we have already discussed it, but at the present time we don't have any clinical photographs. Yes, right. We have, all, we have already admitted this. Yes, uh, this is a... he, he doesn't have any clinical photograph with him now. No sir. No. Okay. 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 the and uh, i can also see the uh, footprints uh, of some implant which was present uh, on comparison from both the sides the greater trochanter is proximally migrated on the left side compared to the right side 
the fracture and ends are sclerosed and uh, the fracture ends are sclerosed and smoothened out the uh, the size of the proximal fragment is uh, more than 2.5 cm and uh, the fracture margin seem to be smoothened out and and uh, so the, there's a fracture gap uh, there's i cannot uh, i am not able to assess the fracture i am not seeing much fracture gap here and uh, the there are no signs of avascular necrosis which i can appreciate here sir you so, me head bolo neck bolo to counter bolo tani to yes sir Yes, sir. The yes, sir. The greater trochanter is proximally migrated, sir. Are yes. Uh, so broadening, thickening. Do you just just clean? Can you say something? Can I ask you to tell me? Sir, there is no broadening or thickening of the greater trochanter, but the surface is seems to be irregular, sir. A trochanter ki fragmentation hai aaj se na ki nahi. Trochanter thick aaj se. Ek ta bhi tu dakhat chhu. Yes, sir. Are neck aaj se neck neck sir triangle aaj se neck aaj se. अपोजिट सैडूर राइट साइड एंड ऑल्सो देर आर समार्क्स ऑफ अ फुट प्रिंट ऑफ सम इम्प्लांट प्रेजेंट इन दैड एंड सर health health of the head ki health sir uh, there are no cystic changes or uh, any subcondyle fracture lines are not seen on the uh, uh, head sir sir it seems to be a viable head sir professor okay, sendupto hello ma'am bolo hmm. or or a x ray interpretation ta चारिकुंदर भावेमेंट प्रपारलि you say what the structures you can see in the x ray here you can say almost all of the pelvis part of Please the sacrum bilateral. both of the femur both of the hip joint including upper top of the femur tick tick bolche proximal femur now this x ray shows bole you how do you come from outside inwards or inside out sir outside inwards e gulo practice dor kare there is whether there is soft tissue swelling where there is a foreign body then you come to the bone There is periosteal elevation, periosteal reaction. Then you come to the come to the. अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है अच्छा तुम ठीक बोले चुके किंतु अकॉन टाइम शॉर्ट है सिर्फ ना अकॉन एक आ एक आ तुम्हें ये है ना एक हाँ ने वो जितना बोला हुआ चीज़ जो कंडीशन ऑफ़ द फिमोरल हेड कंडीशन ऑफ़ द फिमोरल नेक तो कंडीशन ऑफ़ द टोकेंटर कंडीशन ऑफ़ � उटर 
Sir, we we have completed this place, sir, or or sir, we want to. No, no, I can. Yes, sir. Time. Rajiv, time short. Ache to okay. I can. What to go? What to do now? Ki kore be tumi? Confirmation to. Sir, I would like to do the blood investigations to rule out any infection. Uh, I would like to uh, do the complete blood uh, count and the total leukocyte count and the electrocyte, uh, electrocyte sedimentation rate and the C-reactive protein and all the other in blood investigations. Then, uh, sir, I would uh, like to order a MRI of pelvis with bilateral hip joint to rule out any signs of avascular necrosis. पेशेंट and uh, sir depending on the expectations of the patient if the patient wants to salvage the hip i would like to uh, do a valgus trochanteric osteotomy uh, of the left hip joint sir left hip akun to do you sure that you can to me unite for the parvet age will the fracture unite after doing this trochanteric valgus trochanteric osteotomy sir the patient is if the patient wants if the patient wants uh, his own native hip uh, then sir i can try uh, sir i should try sir because uh, the patient is young sir the patient is only 45 years old and uh, if any process is done now he would definitely need a revision surgery two or three times so sir i would try to salvage the hip if possible sir. good i think uh, we have done with this case shen gupta sir uh, ranjit sir okay yeah okay no, theek hai wo bole the jo jata par bole the we will go with our next session uh, professor chinmay desar is moderator and dr kiran mukhopadhyay and dr subodeep will uh, uh, tell us how to ex examine a spine case kiran da you are there subodeep subodeep and kiran da yes Yeah, sir was there i saw yeah so you can start sharing uh, ya yeah, kiranda we can start the case presentation and one kind request there was a request from uh, because this uh, meeting is being telecast in uh, uh, boa group also jharkhand also if we can keep discussion in english there will be help because jharkhand pg has just told me if we can keep discussion in english mode sir the question and answer can be asked in english so that will be helpful for them also and also it's been telecast in bangladesh also nitor also sir so chinmay uh, the chinmay sir yes 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 sir we can start the session now sir please yes sir. start the session yeah uh, dr kiran mukhopadhyay will, will professor kiran mukhopadhyay will uh, present first right yeah yeah kiran the <coughs> followed by your sir Iraner background ta khub sundor Himalay I think in virtual platform sir we have good uh, 39 attendance right now in zoom platform only a lot of people already 30 yeah. yeah. and okay. already sir in youtube also lots of pgdp are participating even uh, uh, from kisan ganj from uh, pmch nmch and uh, rims also pgd is participating so student that yeah please start Okay, uh, I will briefly discuss the how to examine a case of uh, Kelly spine, and uh, Shubhadeep uh, is uh, there with me. So uh, Shubhadeep will also uh, try to demonstrate a few things, and he also uh, will. Chinmay uh, sir is also there, Kiran. Uh, he is also there as a moderator. Chinmay sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, please. Uh, so I am sharing my screen. Is it, is it visible? No, no, not right now. Now. No, we can't see it. No, no, no. Now? Yes. Now, now. this there, please. Okay. So, uh, how to present? Uh, how to present a uh, case by case in the uh, exam? So. 
so before that i uh, i'm i'm basically talking to the uh, uh, pgs so i will talk like that uh, don't mind so uh, before presenting a case so you must uh, first uh, memorize uh, that what you are going to see what you are going to feel so just uh, three slides that uh, we know there is 33 vertebra then 31 pairs of nerve roots there are 23 discs and the spinal cord ends like this uh, is spinal cord uh, ends conus uh, medullaris phylum primarily and finally it ends uh, as quadra equina and this is the structure we feel uh, we palpate so this is the uh, normally vertebral body so there is a spinous process lamina and the transverse process and uh, this is the uh, parts and the facet is uh, about uh, less than 1 inch lateral to the spinous process the zygomatous joint and uh, this is the top view so so these are the usually common cases uh, we can get in day to day practice also in the exam the congenital the spina bifida infective is uh, majority of the cases in our country is tuberculosis traumatic is a uh, traumatic is cases is there new plastic metabolic uh, degenerative like pivd or lumbar stenosis and inflammatory like ankle spondylitis and also uh, scoliosis cases now nowadays it is also given in the exam but we are uh, now going to discuss on case pain only so before studying clinical examination uh, you must introduce yourself because you must be comfortable to the patient so introduce yourself then uh, politely ask permission to perform examination and explain the patient appropriately what you are going to do so uh, that will uh, that will make a, a closer relation with the patient and that will help you in a lot in the exam the patient must be exposed properly this is very important so uh, you may uh, for a male patient you may bring a uh, 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 under uh, garment a new under garment also you, can, you, you may uh, take it with you we had we have done in our exam also so that will help you to properly expose the patient because the patient may not uh, have a under garment may be in a uh, dress like dhoti or mm -hmm. Lumi. So it's a it's a good practice that you take a uh, new undergarment with you for a male patient or particularly. Tell the patient to let you know if anything you do uh, is uncomfortable or painful to the patient. So he must uh, inform you. So you will stop because in the exam the patient should not uh, uh, have any expression in the face uh, while you are examining. And, uh, and uh, lastly, when a female patient you are examining a female patient, make sure that a female nurse or female attendant is present there. And before presenting the case to the examiner, you must mark everything with skin marking pen, uh, whichever uh, uh, likes the spinous processes, uh, like the scapular, uh, like the uh, PI, uh, posterior will spine, like the ASIS. So, clinical examination of spine is a, uh, the subsessions are history, general examination, inspection, palpation, movements, measurements, special test, and neurology. Uh, history of present illness uh, must be presented, uh, the chief illness must be in a chronological manner, and usually in uh, tuberculosis spine, uh, the pain appears fast, and uh, the paralysis uh, starts almost 8 to 12 months normally after the onset of the pain. So pain appears fast, then usually there is swelling, then uh, weakness or numbness, and finally deformity. So during uh, describing the pain during history, you uh, must uh, uh, describe on the following points, the site, the severity, uh, whether there is continuous or intermediate, the nature, the radiation, the aggravating and relieving factor, uh, if there is any positional variation or walking distance that is not, not uh, fit for the patient uh, in the case spine the examination because case spine cases are given usually uh, with uh, paraplegia. So walking distance is usually, I am telling uh, later on. And also you asked about history of trauma, history of constant symptoms, history of hemoptysis, hemoptysis, melena, history of SPD symptoms, dyspnea, history of other joint development, history of pelvic infantry disease. Any treatment history, particularly if uh, he or she is taking uh, multiple medicines in the morning and if, if there is a, any red coloration of the urine, that will give you a clue that if he is suffering with taking medicines of the, uh, for the tuberculosis. Reunion history and full development history. That should be inquired before uh, going to exam. And the past history, the similar complaints is there. Is there any prolonged drug history? Is there any history of any previous surgery? 
diabetes, hypertension, tuberculosis, hematological disorder, or any neurological disorder. And for personal history, smoking, alcohol, drug addiction, diet, bowel bladder habit, appetite, sexual history, and also menstrual history in the female. Family history, similar illness, is, uh, or is, is there any tuberculosis contact in the uh, family? For general examination, you have to examine uh, at a quick glance from head to toe and uh, weight height uh, that you should ask your moderator uh, about the height and weight because you are not going to taking the uh, uh, weight in the exam. And is there any neurocutaneous markers like capsule patch, patch, hairy patch, ligamentous laxity, clubbing, sinusitis, pallor, lymphadenopathy? On inspection, usually in a spine case in jail, so localization should start with standing the line down. But for any spine, which usually uh, you know, almost 100% cases are given with some sort of uh, paralysis, uh, paraplegia cases. So standing, you should never, never, done, never do in the exam. So no, don't try to uh, do exam uh, with a standing position. And get, uh, for the gate, it's also same about the gate. Don't try to uh, elicit the gate in a spine case spine patient. And when the examiner will ask you, you will just simply answer that sir, this is a uh, case spine patient, so this is answerable maybe, so I will, I will not uh, try that. And you must know, that is the most important thing, is that you must know how to, how to log rule. Because in the exam, the examiner will come and ask you, uh, have you, have you inspected from the back? You will say yes, then show me, whatever you said. And if you, without asking anybody's help, and without or without doing a proper log roll with a uh, towel piece or uh, bed, bed sheet piece, if you just want to uh, rotate the patient, uh, you make uh, the patient's position, the lateral position, uh, you will not be able to uh, go through the exam. Because it's, I have seen many times external uh, uh, this is trick. They will ask you, uh, inspect from back, and you will, if immediately you should ask, sir, I want, a assist, want an assistant I, uh, because I, I want to turn the patient in a log roll manner. And you must memorize these things, the level. Uh, the C7 is the vertebral provenance. D1 is the most prominent spinal process. D3 is the spines of capula. D7 is the inferior angular scapula. And L4 is the highest spinal crest. And S2 is the PC. That is the dimple of venous is the S2. So this uh, level, you because uh, while you will finally submit your the provisional level, so you must uh, uh, tell about the what is the vertebral level and what is the neurological level. So this this thing you must memorize. Uh, and now uh, on inspection from the back, what you will you see? You will see the position of head, level of hairline, length of neck, level of shoulders, level of scapula. Is there any def uh, deformity, scoliosis or scoliotic tilt, margin of trunk, spinous process, iliac crest, dimple of venous, and whether the central the midline furrow uh, is increased or decreased. And uh, then you also look for uh, paraspinal muscle spasm, muscle wasting, uh, any swelling, lipoma, or particularly cold abscess in case of face spine. Uh, you must uh, inspect the dental angle, the skin for dimple, hair traps, reverse, scars, scar, sinus, bed sort, etc. And also you look for scape, apparent shortening of the limbs or pelvic obliquity. Uh, if you see a uh, uh, cold abscess like this, you, it must be described according to manner of the how, how we were taught in the undergraduate. Uh, what is written in is thus. And from so lateral part, lateral side, you must uh, see the spinal curves, and uh, you must uh, see the kyphosis. Uh, what whether this knuckle that is uh, involvement to one vertebra, angular or rounded. Rounded is if there is more than three vertebrae involved. Lordosis whether it's increased or decreased. Is there any scar sinus or swelling or abscess? And from the front. Uh, you must uh, uh, comment about the level of nipples, chest shape, abdomen protrusion. If there is uh, uh, abdomen is swelled due, due to uh, some intestinal pus, maybe they are uh, associated with the case spine. Is there any scar, sinus, or swelling? And also uh, comment about the position of the SIS. Now, uh, coming to the palpation, uh, you must uh, first you must palpate, uh, uh, comment about the temperature, the localizer temperature, and always compare with a normal site. Uh, with the affected side. Uh, never just don't touch the uh, over the affected side first. And palpate all the spinous process, uh, screening of a pain that, that will screen a painful vertebra. And also uh, note the prominent spinous process that is knuckle, angular, or round. Uh, note for the step, tenderness from occiput to coccyx. The tenderness should be, could be elicited by either direct pressure, if you get direct pressure, is fine, either twist tenderness or deep thrust tenderness. 
So direct pressure of the spinous process, uh, and if there is pain, it will suggest posterior spinal disease. Tender interspinal area will usually suggest this pathology. Rotary tenderness is, uh, is the attempt to rotate uh, the spine, and the thrust tenderness uh, is just do thumbing of the over the spinous processes. And rotary will give you a direct rotary strain at the base of the affected spinous process, or by exerting rotational movement in opposite direction to the disease and adjoining normal spinous process, but is not done in the heavy spine cases. Uh, uh, the paraspinal muscle spasm is is evident on inspection and can be elicited by uh, a tap over the muscle or direct pressure over the spinous process or a Keebler test. What is Keebler test? Keebler test is the attempted movement of the pinched overlying skin along axis of the paraspinal muscle will be restricted in patients of spasm. That is the Keebler test. Muscle spasm manifests as visible and palpable painful contraction of the paraspinal muscles. So, and also uh, there is tenderness, uh, tenderness, shape or deformity, level and number, any swelling or collapses. That is the same repetition of the corroboration of the previous findings. And regarding movement also, normally in spine cases, you have to uh, examine the movement and movements are uh, in the cervical and thoracolumbar spine, flexion, extension, alternate pain nutrition, but is never done in a carry spine with paraplegia. Uh, measurements, uh, linear measurements can be uh, taken from occiput to portuparis to the tip of the uh, coccyx, the iliocostal distance, and the chest expansion, also the uh, limbal discrepancy. Usually uh, not asked in the exam, is not uh, uh, necessary for the case spine. And now uh, come to the neurological examination. So, is a routine, you know, the higher men uh, mental function, the cranial lumps, and finally motor and sensory. So, regarding uh, Motor neurology, what will you look for? We look for bulk of muscles, bone, motor power, that is the investigating I'm uh, talking later on. The reflexes are two types, superficial and deep, superficial and abdominal. You must uh, memorize these, uh, these root levels for these, uh, each particular reflexes. Abdominal is P7 to T12, pemastic is L1, L2, anal is S2, S3, S4, valvo is S2, 3, and 4, plantar is S1. And for the deep jerk, the knee jerk is L3, L4, ankle jerk is S1. And also, we should uh, look for coordination and involuntary movements. Now, uh, the bulk of muscle uh, is seen by inspection and also palpation. And we should note the size, texture, consistency, elasticity. And the, uh, the bulk is measured when the bulk is maximum. And what is uh, tone? So, how to examine tone and what is tone? Tone, muscle tone, uh, what is muscle tone? Muscle tone is defined as the uh, continuous and Passive partial contraction of the muscle. It is a state of partial contraction of the muscle. Continuous state of partial contraction. Or, or the muscle's resistance to uh, passive stretching uh, during the resting phase. So that's in the, uh, how we see the tone. So if you uh, see the tone of the hamstring, so you keep your hand in the, uh, the palm in the uh, hamstring, you feel it, and then gradually flex it. And for what, the, what is the stone? This is the method. So uh, usually uh, uh, the case spine involves the dorsal spine. Uh, so there is usually spastic uh, tone. There is a tone is usually increased. This is usually upper motor neural lesion. So is a, what is the class type, type of uh, uh, passivity? There's initial resistance, which increases on in, uh, increasing speed. Then there is a sudden giveaway. That is the uh, class type type of rigidity. Then coming to the power. So we, you should memorize this grade also. This is a MRC grading. The grade uh, zero is complete paralysis. One is a flicker. Two is power detectable only when gravity is excluded. Uh, grade three is limb can be held against gravity, but not against exertion resistance. Grade four is some degree of weakness is present. And gate five is normal power. So this is the uh, method in uh, how uh, uh, you will examine the power. But uh, for case spine, you must examine in a lying down position, not in this, in this manner. But this is the normal method. You just initially right. you ask him uh, if he, if he or she can do it against gravity. If he if he cannot, then you make him or her lie down, then elevate the gravity. And then you examine the uh, power that is the muscle. That's the, that's the eliminating the gravity.
Reading the reflexes, uh, the reflexes, uh, there is also grading of reflexes. The zero is absent, one is present as a normal ankle jack, two is brief as a normal knee jack, three is very brief, and four is scrolling. Scrolling is a type of uh, reflex also. So, uh, how we elicit the ankle jack? The patient's leg is externally rotated with flexion at knee, the foot is dorsiflex to stretch the Achilles tendon. The stretching of the, uh, that particular muscle is very important. And the posterior aspect of the tendon is trapped with a hammer. And plantar flexion of the foot with contraction of the gastrocnemius muscle is looked for. Always exposed properly because uh, we are doing ankle jack and we must see the contraction of the gastrocnemius. And this is the knee jerk. The examiner places his left forearm under the patient's both knees in order to slightly flex them together. The joints are relaxed with heels falling on the bed. The patellar tendon is stuck with the hammer and extension of the knee and visible contraction of the quadriceps muscle is seen. But in case of case spine, so uh, uh, this uh, examination sitting position is not possible. So this is how we exam uh, in case spine the knee jack. Patient is lying supine. Exposure must be proper. Feel the patellar tendon. Knee slightly flexed. And then the gentle tap over the patellar tendon. You can see, well, there is a visible contraction of the quadriceps. What is uh, the two types of pronouns we see? The patellar pronouns. What is patellar pronouns? In a supine patient with extended lower limb, forefinger and thumb of one hand are placed just over the superior pole of the patella, over the two sides of the quadriceps. A single stimulus is given. A single stimulus is given by pushing the patella distally. If positive patella pronouns will be apparent by uh, repeated pulling of the patella upwards by quadriceps tendon. Uh, I will show uh, example of uh, how to elicit the ankle pronouns. What is ankle, how ankle pronouns is elicited? The hip and knee of the patient are flexed to 90 degrees and one hand supports the lower limb just below the knee. With the other hand, a dorsiflexion stimulus is given by the fingers placed at the forefoot. In a case of upper motor neuron paralysis, there will be a repetitive plantar flexion movements. So usually more than six consecutive movement is necessary for describing the pronus, otherwise it, it will uh, uh, describe as a pseudoconus. And now coming to the super, superficial reflexes, abdominal reflexes. With the patient who find the abdomen and the amatum <coughs> are to be stimulated by a key or a similar object, starting from the outer aspect towards the midline. This results in visible contraction of the abdominal wall muscle of the corresponding quadrant. The plantar reflex. Uh, what is plantar reflex? With the muscles of the lower limb relaxed, scratch over the outer Age of the show with a key or a similar blunt object, the normal response consists of a contraction of the tensor facilitator, the adductors of the thigh, the sartorias, and on the further stimulus, plantar flexion of the toes and dorsal flexion of the inversal ankle. I will show an example. The movement of the great toe must be checked before eliciting a plantar reflex. Start from outer border, and this is a clear cut uh, extension of the uh, uh, gate toe, and there is a fanning of the other toe. This is a classical example of WC sign. So, usually we get uh, upper motor neural lesion in case spine with paraplegia in, in our exam. So there, uh, there, be, there will be spasticity, but in human lesion, there is usually no or minimum atrophy. There is hypertonia. The distal uh, uh, reflexes are increased. Superior, superficial reflexes are altered, and Babineski sign are positive. Uh, now, uh, what about sensory system? You just uh, uh, memorize this uh, picture. Uh, then you will be uh, interpret very well, uh, because you have to see. The uh, person system, the pain, the temperature, and 
touch that is the spinofemoral interaction system and for posterior calcium system uh, the light touch the vibration sense and also position sense and for cortical the stereogenesis and two point discrimination and uh, for a uh, posterior calcium sensation a vibration sense we uh, usually ask to in the exam to how to elicit how to how to uh, illustrate a uh, vibration how to see a vibration so for that you should carry a tuner with 128 hertz is uh, better than uh, 256 and you should also memorize uh, this uh, sensory mapping uh, the l1 to s2 so that will help you for uh, uh, corroborating your findings uh, for neurological neurological level for seeing the uh, commenting on neurological levels and last comes to bladder so this is a one liner if there is a passive, uh, upper motor neuron lesion what will be there the stone will be increased so the uh, the uh, bladder will failure to store that will be in a persistent contact state so there will be failure to store and uh, in element the lesion of the tunas or coda so there will be failure to empty because stone will be less the blood will uh, there will be difficult to void so this is one line the in upper motor neural lesion there is passivity so there is a failure to store and for lower motor lesion there is a plasticity so there is a failure to empty and for uh, lesion from t20 to l1 there may be a mixed upper motor and lower motor neural bladder so uh, uh, for diagnosing uh, this bladder uh, uh, i think it is not so much required in exam and you also uh, know uh, memorize this also the determining the neurological level with vertebral level so for cervical you add 1 for d1 to d6 you add 2 for d7 to d9 you add 3 for d10 it's l1 for d11 it's l2 to l3 for d12 it's l4 to l5 and l1 onwards the sacral segments and uh, last but not the least uh, the distal joint you must examine you must uh, uh, say in the exam that you have uh, uh, elicit to try to elicit the joint uh, examine the sacral joint that is a sacral you should know the sacral joint tenderness and there are different tests for sacral joint uh, we usually prefer the fever test the patric fever test and also if there is in pressure sore comment about the pressure sore and last but not the least uh, you must ask your moderator for a gloves uh, if he does not provide then it's all right you will tell the examiner or if he provide the gloves do a pr exam thank you any question from delegates uh, subodeep was would like to add something kiran the subodeep ah uh, subodeep is there subodeep uh, will also uh, interact with the pgd uh, if there is any question uh, you will Uh, any question from post graduate residents there is one common question subodhi past in examination what is autonomic and what is autonomous cup bladder so how to answer this in examination yeah. actually the autonomous bladder automatic bladder and uh, these two types of bladder are manifested by the areas of spine that has been involved uh, what kiran sir has taught us that in the spastic bladder that is autonomous bladder and when there is flaccid bladder so there is overflowing bladder that cannot control urination but in due time some automatic reflexes uh, arise within the bladder muscle itself so later on in flaccid bladder they also start controlling urine to some extent and that is automatic bladder thank you subodhi another question which is commonly asked what is difference between spasticity and rigidity so how will you try to explain to residents to answer the examination sud so subodhi yes yes yeah, rajiv da how Uh, how will you define spasticity and rigidity actually spasticity uh, and rigidity both are upper motor neuron type uh, problem in spasticity there is a continuous resistance in passive movement and in rigidity also the same 
but rigidity has two types one is cogwheel type of rigidity and one is lead pipe type of rigidity in lead pipe type of rigidity there is continuous resistance all along the movement which is mainly due to the pyramidal tract lesion and in case of a cogwheel type of rigidity it is a extra pyramidal type lesion wherever there is a phagic resistance phagic release so that when we uh, start uh, doing the range of motion of the joint sometimes we feel resistance and sometimes the resistance is lost so basically this is cogwheel rigidity a uh, extra pyramidal type of problem commonly seen in parkinsonism kinmay sir you want to add something kinmay sir Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. The spine is told to be a very good case for passing out because you have lots of clinical method to show, and if you can show them adequately, I think it's the best case in examination you can get. Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry. Right. <clears throat> Actually, spasticity is a, is a, is a stimulation of the uh, reflexes, that is the muscle uh, by upper motor neuron paralysis. It is usually the pyramidal type of lesion. And that uh, rigidity is continuous. Spasticity is basic. Initially, there is some, some spasm and it is released. That is the plasmic uh, problem. And in case of Rigidity, it is continuous resistance. There are two types, variant of it. One is lead pipe, that is continuously you feel resistance. If you try to move the joint, you will feel continuous uh, resistance. And in cogwheel, serial, relaxation resistance, relaxation resistance, both are actually extra pyramidal lesion. And in case of pyramidal lesion, there may be muscle weakness. But in case of extra pyramidal lesion, there is no muscle weakness. This is two basic differences. And regarding the, regarding the Broader problem, it is better to memorize the autonomous, automatic, there has been confusion. One is when there is lesion is above the S1, that is uh, that is the upper upper control of uh, vertical control is lost, but the reflex is going on in the broader. Once it is once it is uh, fill up, it, it evaporates spontaneously. This is uh, called the this is called the neurological incontinence. Neurological incontinence. And other is when the, the lesion involves the S1, S2, S3, there is actually paralysis of the muscle. And then it will be an overflow type of incontinence. It is better to uh, memorize in this way. One is overflow, that is the lower motor involvement of the drops supplying the bladder. And other is uh, upper motor, that is the uh, uh, neurological in, uh, incontinence. When the control is lost, but the total supply of the blood is maintained. Anything more you want to add, Kinmayda Subodip, for clinical examination? The, the thing is, uh, for bladder, it is uh, what uh, Professor Chinmayda uh, told that is easier to remember uh, because there is a lot of confusing terms in autonomous bladder, autonomic bladder. It is very difficult to, um, to uh, express uh, in the exam setting. So it is easier to remember um, um, just, just like human bladder and element bladder. Yes. And uh, regarding the, uh, the spasticity, um, um, the spasticity is uh, it is also uh, it, it is also overlapping with rigidity because the rigidity uh, while we do the we divide the rigidity into lead pipe rigidity and cogwheel rigidity. Lead pipe rigidity is uh, it is. Um, uh, these are happening in uh, case of extra pyramidal lesion, and it is common in uh, Parkinsonism. While the spasticity is uh, upper motor neuron uh, 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 disorder, so uh, it may be pyramidal tract, it may be uh, below that. So um, the spasticity may be uh, uh, divided into. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, spasticity may be divided into a pyramidal tract lesion or uh, in the uh, spinal lesion. So, uh, um, so you have to remember in the, in this way. I think uh, this was a very good presentation by Kiranda and good discussion by Subodhi, Chinmayde, and Chinmay, Chinmay Nata and Chinmayde sir. I think we will go with our last uh, uh, presentation. Uh, regarding, very... regarding, uh, regarding one thing, regarding some yes, practical tips for uh, spine examination. 
as uh, Dr. Chinma they has told that this is just like in mathematics. Mm -hmm. So the mark uh, scoring is much more in spine case than BF case. So clinical examination, you know, for the short case and for the long case. So we all examiners have decided that in the long case, at least three examinations to be demonstrated. So what are the three important examinations in spine that has to be demonstrated? That is number one. Number two, what is the significance of gait analysis or gait study in case of a spine case? And number three, how will you know that this spinal injury or this spinal disease or the lesion that has occurred to the detent spine is irreversible or reversible? So these are the clinical tips they ask in the examination. But if three you want to answer this case, please. Three things. One is a, what is the significance of the gait in a spine case? And number two is the how you would discern that whether it is a reversible or reversible spine that has to be from clinical examination. And third thing I told you regarding the three examination, three three examination, but, minimum three, minimum three demonstrations to be done in any long case because of yeah, Subhadi, please. Sir, uh, uh, sir, actually gait is a very important examination in spine, but the gait should always be evaluated in such scenario where the spine is stable, where there is a suspected unstable spine, such as in trauma and infection, we should take care about uh, the patient before performing a gait. Gait is basically evaluated in myelopathy cases, in uh, disc and degenerative problems where the posture least and the gait is important. But in a case of suspected trauma or a case of discitis where there is a chance of spinal instability, gait shouldn't be examined. Rather, we should uh, request our examiner that I have, and we should told them that I have examined this patient in supine, prone, and in side lateral, that is in supported posture. But I have not ex examined the patient in standing position and also not examined gait as I have a fear that there is might some instability in spine. So this is all about the very good points. Yeah. Very good. This is a very good right. point. Very good. And second about prognosis, whether it's irreversible or reversible. Actually, clinical, sir, in clinical practice, wherever we examine a patient with suspected discitis, we see two points that how much is the neuro deficit and how unstable is the spine. So whenever there is a flaccid neurology, in neurology there is flaccidity, and at the same time, patient is non uh, first patient is non walker and second the neurology is flaccid. So obviously we put them into Kumar classification stage four. So in Kumar classification uh, in Kumar stage four the prognosis is very grim. But whenever the patient fits in Kumar classification stage 1, 2 or 3, there is obviously a better prognosis. In Kumar stage 1 and stage 2, the prognosis is very good. In stage 3, there is doubtful. But when there is flaccid spine in stage 4 Kumar classification, the prognosis is very grim. So prognosis can always be ascertained whenever we put the patient neurology and the stability of spine according to the Kumar classification. One question on YouTube, what is the best time to see bulbocavernous reflex after spinal trauma? Sir, please. Once bulbocavernous is reflex after spinal trauma. As early as possible. Uh, uh, Rajiv, regarding, yeah, yeah. The, regarding the prognosis, so uh, the three things. Number one, if uh, clinically it's a complete and for transition, we know the prognosis. Number two, uh, uh, if uh, bladder is involved, so it has been seen that uh, in Philippines also, the prognosis is uh, something guarded. And number three, if uh, the paralysis, uh, the weakness is for more than one and a half years, usually what happens, the neuromuscular, the receptors at the neuromuscular junction, mm -hmm. they, have, uh, they got uh, damaged. So after one and a half years, from the uh, comprehensive myelopathy, on of comprehensive it's very difficult that it will be passed. And bulbo reflex reflex is what is shown is as well as possible and up to when I, uh, uh, you, you, you should uh, also check repeatedly till the spinal shock is over. Yeah, is over. 
ियलिटी It's a very it's important my, topic. My screen is visible, right? Yeah, visible. Please yeah, make yeah. it full screen. But uh, the from Jharkhand, if the students have put any query, please note. Yeah, yeah. They have they they have put that query. Where to put the bulbo camera? Sir, like where to see? That question was from Jharkhand only. Yeah. Right, right. So even from Patna PGTs have joined also sir. on YouTube. They are on YouTube. Yeah. So uh, from from Bangladesh also it is joined. Nitor, Nitor sir, one is joined. Yeah. Nitor, yeah, in Dhaka, yeah. Please, Chin, my dear, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, especially the um, postgraduate students who are appearing for the their MS Ortho and D Ortho exams uh, soon. Uh, this is a Zoom-based discussion. We cannot um, um, uh, organize a um, uh, classroom class. So, uh, let us discuss after the uh, clinical examination. Nice discussion of the uh, clinical examination. Uh, let us discuss the management of. tuberculosis of spine previously it was called scary spine but scary spine is not a right term right now so we will we will call it tuberculosis of spine so uh, uh, first point we have to notice that spinal tb is the commonest of all skeletal tuberculosis so uh, let us jump into a case so uh, uh, before that we should um, expect what we will expect uh, your uh, the um, d ortho or m ortho ms ortho pgts even dmd pgts in the exam the tb spine may be encountered in different uh, areas of your exam hall mostly in short case maybe in long case and uh, some uh, discussions uh, uh, regarding management uh, after the discussion of the long case and short case and then in the viva table um, uh, um, radiology uh, um, uh, play films uh, may be given to you and you have to answer on those maybe uh, instruments uh, which are used in the spinal surgery given to you and you will be asked question on those instruments and then operative steps can be give, um, um, asked uh on instruments as well as uh, discussion of the management so let us uh, start with a case so this is a 42 year old female patient uh, she has complained of back pain for 5 uh, months she has history of loss of weight loss of appetite but no history of fever and she has uh, weakness for of both uh, legs uh, for last two months and inability to stand and uh, as you did uh, already in the last class the clinical examination there is tenderness at d9 and d10 with uh, anemia and uh, uh, power uh, uh, muscle power right side uh, grade 2 uh, and left side grade 1 sensation is diminished jugs are exaggerated plantar sarcoma mm -hmm. and bladder is involved so uh, and the patient came with this x ray with the hand in, in this x ray now how will manage the case the pgts anyone any of the pgts answer pgts we are who are going to take their exam in uh, uh, this coming exam uh, ms ortho d ortho you should know you should answer how will you manage this case with the uh, patient having uh, an x ray film with it you will be going to become a, a registrar or uh, and soon become a consultant so uh, the this cases will come to your clinic and you will not get any uh, uh, senior to discuss or any colleague to discuss maybe in your uh, opd so how will you proceed in this case so most of the cases the uh, uh, in exam in the tense scenario the uh, ex examinee jump into the treatment the how i, I will uh, start it i will i will um, uh, put the patient at bed rest and then uh, surgery etc 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 but that is wrong because the management 
comprises of any uh, uh, disease comprises of investigation and treatment and the patient has only an x-ray with her hand so you have to investigate the case thoroughly now how will investigate the case of kidney spine or a, 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 a spinal case a patient presenting with this uh, it's a, the spinal problems first let us start with a, a common investigation like total count differential count esr and hemoglobin percentage these are all lab investigations c reactive protein then uh, uh, it may be laboratory it may be bedside test a tuberculin skin test then when you get the uh, uh, sample then you can uh, do a smear examination you can do a serological test you can do uh, get tissue diagnosis culture and other investigations these are all lab investigations so uh, let us discuss one after another so you don't need to uh, do the test by yourself but you have to suggest the correct uh, investigations according to the patient's condition and according to your suspicion according to your clinical diagnosis to reach the final diagnosis so and you have to learn to interpret the um, investigation so in tuberculosis spine esr may be elevated it may not be elevated but it may be elevated in 60 to 94% uh, of cases it is neither sensitive nor specific but uh, it uh, has a prognostic value how the treatment works especially the chemotherapy works the it uh, generally normalizes within the 3 months of chemotherapeutic treatment that means treatment with antitypical drugs but sometimes it failure to uh, fail to normalize then you must think of alternative etiology or primary drug resistance that is very important in case of uh, 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 kedis uh, tuberculosis spine or kedis spine because drug resistance like uh, mdr or xdr is um, uh, commoner in nowadays really uh, it may start elevating after the initial dip initially the uh, after treatment the esr become normal then again uh, it come it it, it it is going to be higher so in that case it is uh, you may think that there is secondary drug resistance developed in the uh, chemotherapeutic treatment then we uh, should discuss c reactive protein c reactive protein is uh, a better indicator than uh, esr it is elevated in 71% cases of, uh, with spinal tuberculosis it is slightly more specific than esr because esr may be raised in malignancy also but c reactive protein is uh, uh, increased only in infection and inflammation but it is not specific for tuberculosis so it is non specific and crp takes about 2 weeks to change and esr takes about 4 weeks to change after 4 uh, weeks uh, for change uh, after treatment so esr uh, crp is coming down earlier than esr after uh, start atd is started and it is better uh, so it is better than esr in monitoring your treatment now wbc count it is very non specific but sometimes lymphocyte count may be elevated especially in children so this is how uh, tuberculin test is done it is 0.1 ml tuberculin uh, protein is injected subcutaneously in the oral aspect of the forearm and you have to re read or the lab uh, in this case uh, in our case in the hospital lab personnel should re uh, take a reading after 48 to 72 hours but you must know hey, this second to uh, the, the the last two points are asked in the exam how uh, it is measured whether the uh, redness or hyperemia is measured or the induration is measured this simple question is asked you it need not you should not measure the uh, redness red areas you should measure for the induration and before measurement you should fill the induration now interpretation of induration in hiv and recent contact with tuberculosis and chest x ray suggestive of tuberculosis then even 5 to 9 mm uh, uh, diameter of induration considered positive but in um, uh, iv drug abuse children especially 10 to 15 mm induration uh, is positive considered positive and if the induration is more than 15 mm then any person is a positive Uh, even if there is no risk of tuberculosis now uh, serology there are um, serological tests which are also of very non specific value uh, like elisa and sometimes in brucella endemic uh, areas complement fixation test for brucella is also uh, done now this is important this uh, uh, before 3 um, uh, or 4 3 uh, or 4 years these uh, tests are done by many countries for um, um screening of tuberculosis 
and this is uh, the gamma interferon test or interferon gamma radio uh, immunoassay the two types of uh, gamma interferon tests are done in different countries quantiferon and t spot tb quantiferon is done in american based medicine who, who follows american based medicine and t spot tb tests are done in the countries where british medicine is followed Uh, it is a whole blood test it measures a person's cell mediated immunity to m mycobacterium tuberculosis but it cannot differentiate between uh, latent tuberculosis infection or active tuberculosis disease that is similar to the tuberculin test it is uh, it is also very non specific now what is specific test the specific lab tests are tissue diagnosis there are two most common conclusive method for reaching the diagnosis of spinal tb then uh, when we can say that it is tuberculosis is nothing else these two are if you find histopathol if you find uh, certain um, uh, features in histopathological examination like caseating necro uh, necrosis central caseating necrosis and epithelioid giant cell and ab culture if you find that find the acid fast mycobacterium or acid fast bacilli so in these two scenario you are sure that it is a case of uh, tuber mycobacterium tuberculosis nothing else so but these two are invasive tests because you have to get the sample uh, from deeper areas like spine you have to uh, um, uh, do some spartitness procedure under uh, ga or uh, local anesthesia and uh, sedation and it is uh, it should always be done other all after other all non invasive investigations like lab tests and other lab tests and image imaging studies like x ray mri etc so uh, the tissue diagnosis is ideal to get a, a true uh, it is ideal to get a tissue diagnosis if possible it's sometimes it may not be possible or may not be required to get a tissue diagnosis before going into surgery or before going into anti tubercular drug but it is ideal and uh, sometimes due to lack of uh, facilities or due to inaccessible areas of spine it may not be possible tissue diagnosis by percutaneous or open procedure if there is a diagnosis sorry uh, for the um, uh, typing mistake it is a diagnostic dilemma and if you if sometimes in the rural areas or remote areas where facilities are not there empirical treatment is uh, started with anti tubercular drug uh, on suspicion of tuberculosis now nowadays it is discouraged but still in our rural uh, areas um, the doctors may um, start anti tubercular drug with an empirical uh, treatment but you have to stop it for 72 hours before going into any um, uh, tissue sample or uh, for culture now how to do the sample collection for tissue diagnosis it can be done by i told you the percutaneous ct guided needle biopsy i'll uh, show you how to do and uh, uh, there is another thing it is uh, the percutaneous ct guided needle biopsy is not done by our orthopedic surgeons it is done by the radiologist in the radiological suit ct suit um but it uh, may be done by uh, uh, under local anesthesia uh, it should be done under local anesthesia and sometimes under sedation also um, then comes transpedicular needle biopsy using c arm or navigation guide we have to do that uh, in our operating room setting uh, under uh, local anesthesia plus uh, sedation then usg or ct guided aspiration of the deep seated abscess that is also uh, done by the radiologists and uh, finally the operating specimen after you uh, debride the if you need to uh, do operation if uh, and you have to debride the tissues then you send this uh, tissue for uh, the histopathology and uh, tissue culture and smear examination this is how uh, in ct scan suit the patient is placed and uh, this needle goes uh, under ct guidance not needle goes into the disease vertebra and takes the sample under local anesthesia and or sedation and this is how a uh, transpedicular um, uh, biopsy is taken um, using c arm and with jamshedi needle this term you have to remember sometimes examiner examiner ponder about the who, what is the name of the needle which you use uh, in case of transpedicular biopsy uh, bone biopsy so this is a bone biopsy needle called jamshedi needle now after the tissue sample is collected you should send it for staining uh, histopathology culture and nowadays uh, polymerase chain reaction study and gene expert study for culture and uh, uh, for detection of mycobacterium tuberculosis as well as detection of resistance 
the smear examination usually done by the conventional uh, jden staining it is very low sensitivity only um, 12 to 35% cases uh, rarely uh, oramine stain or uh, fluorochrome stain are done but you should not utter uh, forget to utter the word gram stain because you have to rule out the pyogenic infection from the tuberculosis infection but uh, problem is the oh, the smear is that smear examination it cannot identify even if can it can show acid first bacilli it cannot identify the drug resistance now culture you have to send the patient <clears throat> send up sample for culture convent culture can be done by conventional culture media like loewenstein jensen solid egg based media but it is very time consuming it takes uh, it may take up to 6 to 8 weeks so you cannot wait for uh, uh, to start the treatment for 6 to 8 weeks it is having low sensitivity especially in posi bacilli cases like spinal tuberculosis spinal tuberculosis number of bacillus tuberculosis bacillus is not much so uh, may, many a times culture is negative so we uh, nowadays we have switched uh, over to uh, um, newer media like Bactec radiometric culture media. It is radio uh, radioactive carbon labeled. Uh, palmitic acid is used. It is good for diagnosis of smear negative tuberculosis, and it is faster and chance of increased recovery of TB bacilli. There are other systems uh, commercially available like MG960 uh, BAC system, ESP culture system, etc. The advantage of culture is that you can identify the drug sensitivity and drug resistance. Many times we are <clears throat> encountering the MDR and XDR cases, um, uh, multi drug resistant and uh, cases uh, nowadays. And uh, the other uh, tissue samples, tissue samples can be sent for or should be sent for histopathological examination. Usually, text. Um, minimum seven to ten days. You have to have wait for that time. The typical feature in histopathology, which detects the uh, tuberculosis, um, uh, that is caseating granuloma and epithelial giant cells. It is positive in 62 to 92.5 um, percent cases, but it cannot identify drug resistance. That is important. These are the. Uh, this is a histopathological picture um, of uh, tuberculosis. Uh, the macroscopic um, uh, picture is yellowish white or grayish cheesy caseating material is seen. And in micros under microscope, there are epithelial giant cell follicle and uh, a surrounding epithelial giant cells. And in, in between, there is caseating necrotizing granuloma the modern there are some modern tests like uh, polymerase chain reaction pcr pcr is uh, familiar to us now it is a nucleic acid amplification assay it is uh, different types of body fluids and tissues can be used uh, for pcr like uh, operating specimen like um, uh, caseating material or necrotizing nec necrotic material or uh, pus the cultured growth also from the um, uh, media can be sent for uh, PCR in posse bacillary cases. First, you do the culture, you didn't get anything, then you can send it for this cultured material for um, PCR. And then total DNA extraction is uh, followed by is done in case of PCR amplification using commercially available kit. So you need not do anything. Uh, it, uh, the laboratory personnel will do that, and pathologist will do that. Uh, then comes gene expert study. It is a CBNAT based study. The CBNAT in Corona times, you you are aware the CBNAT based uh, kits are used for detecting uh, COVID virus also. So, so it is uh, originally used for detecting uh, mycobacterium. So it is a rapid diagnostic test for tuberculosis detection as well as it can detect rifampicin resistance, which is very common. And tissue a specimen or abscess material can be used for gene expert study. It has good sensitivity and specificity. There are other laboratory investigations, and you must not forget to utter the word liver function test. The examiner examiners are waiting for this uh, to um, uh, hear this um, term liver function test because you have to if if you um, get uh, the diagnosis of tuberculosis, then you have to start antitubercular drugs, and there are many um, uh, and, uh, patients with having antitubercular drugs have liver functions deranged. There are other tests also. Which is very rare, not need not be uh, discussed because it is not asked in the exam. So uh, finally, we have to uh, discuss in the ex in the investigation section the imaging studies like X-ray, which uh, already you have the patient is coming with an, this my patient which I have given has come with the X-ray, then MRI, then CT scan, 
ultrasonic uh, ultrasonography also may be uh, useful in very uh, limited patients uh, functional imaging and molecular imaging first is and the gold standard still the gold standard and you have to answer the questions in your exam you have to um, uh, uh, suggest uh, or prescribe x ray st studies uh, it is a age old study advantage of x ray is a cornerstone it is a cornerstone of spinal imaging any spinal imaging sensitivity is 82% but specificity for uh, detecting spinal tuberculosis it is low it is 57% accuracy is 73% it is inexpensive very cheap and it is very readily available even if you, you have x ray um, you may have x ray beside your clinic uh, and you can get it within hours simple ap and lateral view may be uh, sufficient in most of the cases but there are other disadvantages some disadvantages it is it is unable to show um, any change in early stage of the disease because the earliest uh, uh, extra change um, takes at least 2 to 4 weeks uh, and it is uh, in the two, uh, and it is difficult to visualize the junctional areas like um, uh, in x ray like uh, uh, craniovertebral junction and cervicothoracic junctions because of overlapping and it is difficult to interpret in areas with pri prior spinal surgery. Patient may come with uh, uh, with a uh, prior uh, surgery and uh, uh, the normal anatomy is deranged or altered. Now uh, we have to discuss what are the common X-ray features because if you do not know, you you cannot see at your exam table or viva table. So X-ray uh, plates, X-ray films will be given to you, and you have to identify. Um, you have to describe uh, sometimes uh, examiner will ask you to describe uh, the x-ray or sometimes examiner will ask what are the abnormalities you are getting in this x-ray so in tuberculosis the earliest abnormality are the narrowing of disc space with rarefaction of paradiscal margin you can get this at uh, uh, at our, uh, earliest you can get it uh, average three to four weeks or two to four weeks before that you will not get anything in x-ray then vertebral demineralization that that is osteopenia and the localized osteopenia in the uh, uh, suspected vertebrae then uh, osseous uh, destruction new bone formation paravertebral soft tissue shadow with calcification and you can get gibbous or uh, and kyphotic deformity like this this is left hand side at the left hand side there is a um, uh, x-ray of the lateral view of the cervical spine and uh, this is uh, the topmost vertebra is c1 then c2 c3 c4 all these uh, one to four are normal but c5 is collapsed and there is a uh, destruction of that uh, uh, reduction of the disc space destruction of the vertebral body in the right hand side there is a thor thoracolumbar x-ray and uh, uh, there is destruction of this vertebra and uh, uh, reduction of the disc space and there is kyphotic deformity now these are the uh, you can corroborate the radiological features with the pathology of that disease how this this question is um, asked sometimes with your radiology if you are performing well in your exam the patient, the um, examiner will ask uh, the uh, in this case the separate instance in x-ray shows there is a um, uh, reduction of disc space that means uh, the uh, it is a paradiscal lesion with uh, this, this is the commonest lesion is paradiscal there is reduction of disc space with re rarefaction of the um, uh, uh, bone adjacent to the uh, bony end plates of the adjacent vertebra in this case the disease has spread uh, via the arteries because there are segmental arteries which divide say for instance uh, d10 and d11 if there is a reduction of disc space between d10 and d11 with the uh, collapse of disc space with destruction of the vertebra lower, lower part of the d10 and upper part of the d11 are dis destroyed then the you see it is a arterial disease it spread disease is spread by artery why because the arteries are segmental and it, it, it is divided to into two the upper upper branch goes into the vertebra above like d10 lower part of the it supplies the lower part of the vertebra of the upper vertebra that means d10 uh, lower part of d10 in this case and uh, upper part of the d11 that is upper part of the upper half of the lower vertebra so if there is paradiscal lesion then you uh, uh, you, you, you can um, uh, easily um, conclude that it is a spread the disease spread by the arteries now 
there is sometimes central disease i'll show the picture there are sometimes central vertebral impairment there is no disc space reduction only the one vertebra is collapsed say for instance d10 is collapsed only d10 is collapsed d10 11 d9 10 disc spaces are maintained in this case you there is uh, no segmental arterial involvement because uh, if the segmental arterial involvement then there will be uh, paradiscal uh, uh, destruction so if only the central uh, involvement or collapse of, of one central part of one vertebra then spread most likely by the batson's plexus of the veins because this vein go into one vertebra central part of the one vertebra and disease goes into that vertebra and uh, softens the vertebra and this, the vertebra has collapsed now there are some cases x-rays you will get i'll show you some anterior marginal scalloping or destruction there is no involvement in the disc space disc space is maintained there is no uh, reduction of the vertebral body height or there is no collapse of the vertebral body only anterior part of the vertebral body there are some scalloping that means it may have disease in the other vertebra and the abscess from that vertebra say for instance you are getting scalloping in the d10 and the lesion may be in the d9 or d8 and the abscess from that d9 or d8 disease it extends beneath the anterior just think of the anterior longitudinal ligament the x abscess trickles down through the or beneath the anterior longitudinal ligament and presses the vertebra on the vertebra which is involved radiologically that is scalloping that is d10 in this case so it causes scalloping in the anterior margin so uh, of the vertebra so if there is scalloping in the anterior margin of the vertebra it come it may and there is uh, no other involvement of that vertebra then you can conclude that it may be done by the abscess coming uh, from other vertebra there are some cases where skip lesions are there that is that means you may get, get a lesion in the d7 you may also get in the lesion l1 if you concentrate on d uh, l1 you you may miss d7 or if you concentrate d7 on d7 you may miss l1 in this case if you uh, get a thorough whole spine x-ray you will get many vertebras are involved and if there is many vertebras are involved then you may conclude that spread of the disease or spread of the infection is by batson's plexus of the veins not by arteries mostly and if there is posterior involvement that means involvement of the posterior appendages of the vertebra that means uh, facet joint pedicle uh, 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 lamina it is very rare but me it may happen and uh, it is commonly the posterior involvement commonly happens in metastasis or or the tumor uh, but in tuberculosis uh, it rarely happens so if it happens then it, you should consider they spread via the posterior external venous plexus of vertebral veins or direct spread from some other areas Sometimes there are synovial disease, synovial uh, um, disease like uh, uh, involvement of the synovial membrane of the atlantoaxial joint or atlo atlanto occipital joints. Then you think of the hematogenous spread through the subsynovial vessels. So think uh, of these three extraplates. You can give any of the you, 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 can, you can get any of uh, these uh, extraplate at your uh, viva table. The left most left hand side there see there is only reduction of this disc space there is no other involvement this is uh, uh, l5 l4 l3 this uh, reduction of disc space see compare this disc space with the disc space above and disc space below that means l4 the this is uh, um, this is a 5 4 and 3 l3 l4 the reduction of the disc space in l3 and l4 there is no other thing but in this case there is a destruction of the vertebral body see the, this upper vertebral body and lower vertebral body are destroyed and disc space is uh, completely obliterated and it is collapsed and sometimes you may get an x-ray like this with having local kyphosis you may get a skip lesion like this the upper part this is the upper lesion and this is the lower lesion because uh, the, uh, this is not a whole spine x-ray so you cannot um, uh, it's very difficult to assess the levels but you can get skip lesions like this in and the normal vertebra in between now if you uh, get a case uh, get an x-ray like this in your um, uh, um, viva table then you will you should see the ap Along with the lateral view, you should see the AP view because AP view will show the extent of the paravertebral abscess. This 
arrows are um, indicating the margins of the paravertebral the uh, margins of the paravertebral abscess okay the spindle like thing the involvement is it at t8 t9 and t10 you may get uh, an x ray of cervical spine like this so this is a, in the left hand side in the right hand side is very difficult to interpret because it is an ap view in a la uh, lateral view it is uh, easier to interpret because this is the my uh, computer arrow uh, is showing this this is c1 then c2 then c3 then c4 c1 2 3 4 are normal almost normal but 4 5 disc space are severely reduced compared to the 5 6 and the upper 3 4 disc space and there is destruction of the c5 vertebral body especially in the anterior part the anterior destruction and rarefaction see the uh, red arrow is showing at that uh, point so you may get a case, uh, patient with gibbous like this and you can corroborate with the mri mri will be discussed later so there is a gibbous and uh, you may get a central lesion like this uh, you, uh, this is the central lesion the upper disc space and lower disc space are main maintained but, but compared to the upper vertebra and lower vertebra the height of the vertebra is severely compressed to a thin plate you have a differential diagnosis be prepared for that in your exam differential diagnosis is eosinophilic granuloma this this in eosinophilic granuloma is this this uh, central uh, lesion mimicking lesion in eosinophilic granuloma is called vertebra plana we usually in tuberculosis in uh, tuberculosis spine we don't call the, uh, utter this term vertebra plana but it uh, sometimes looks like vertebra plana and there is a rare thing there is tall vertebra professor rajeshekharan has shown in his um, landmark papers the tall vertebra especially in case of pediatric patients if there is high degree of kyphosis more than 90 90 degree or more then the the vertebra normal vertebra above the level of lesion becomes horizontal and it grows horizontal so there it eliminates the gravity grow on the growth of the, those vertebral body upper vertebral bodies so after uh, healing maybe 10 years or 12 years the the vertebra above the level of the this destruction destroyed by destroyed area you may get a taller vertebra compared to the vertebra uh, in the lower part normal vertebra in lower so normal vertebra may become taller in uh, in the upper uh, upper segment compared to the lower segment and you may get anterior lesion uh, i have already discussed uh this is the anterior lesion there is destruction in the only in the anterior part of the vertebral body now uh, sometimes uh, that tuberculosis may heal with uh, either non surgical or surgical met met method but there are post tb deformity because in spite of effective treatment for spinal tuberculosis it is very common to find residual kyphosis at the end of the treatment and most of the deformity in adults is the outcome of or directly proportional to the diminution of disc height and vertebral body destruction so you may get a, an x ray like this or a mri like this you will not get uh, an active uh, features of active disease but may have some deformity so this is a case of post tuberculous kyphosis see the uh, x ray in the left hand side and this is a, this is a um, uh, clinical picture of this thing this is this picture i, I bought from uh, or i have um, borrowed from uh, professor ak jain's article and uh, see the uh, angle of kyphotic high and degree of kyphotic angle so kyphotic angle you have to measure sometimes if you perform well when examiner will ask you to measure the kyphotic angle definitely you have already passed the exam but there are two sometimes you are asked to measure how uh, as to um, uh, utter the words how to measure the uh, kyphotic angle it is uh, um, introduced by dickson in 1967 the method there are two methods method one is a angle subtended between two lines this is the method one am angle subtended between uh, uh, the two lines which are drawn at the uh, drawn along the posterior border of the proximal posterior border of the proximal these are the proximal vertebra this is a line drawn in the along the proximal pro proximal part of the proximal vertebra uh, posterior um, border of the proximal vertebra and this is a line drawn from along the prox uh, distal par, um, uh, posterior border of the distal vertebra so the angle subtended between these two lines is the k angle or kyphotic angle and the method 2 method 2 is the angle between the uh, uh, between uh, angle subtended between the um, the uh, a, a line passing through the upper end plate of the first normal this is the destroyed vertebra and this is the first normal vertebra so 
line passing through the upper end plate of the first proximal normal vertebra and the line passing through the lower end plate of the first distal normal vertebra so this is the first distal this is the this uh, um, is area this is the first distal vertebra its lower end plate is this and line along this is so the so the angle subtended in between these uh, two line is also uh, called k angle or kyphotic angle so this is a prognostic this has a prognostic value and uh, this can guide you a treatment if it is high degree of kyphosis now uh, frequently uh, uh, nowadays uh, some points are asked uh, uh, about the spine at risk sign in your uh, spinal table if there is a, 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 a especially extra of the pediatric spine then uh, examiner may be uh, waiting or if it is a, he is interested or she is interested in spine then uh, uh, he or she may, may, may be waiting to um, listen to this uh, spine of risk signs so what are the spine at risk signs it is uh, uh, introduced by professor rajeshagar in 2001 there are four spine at risk signs in pediatric spine uh, tb uh, tuberculosis spine one the separation of the facet joint at the apex of the curve so this is the apex of the curve so there is separation of the facet joint the a picture a the number two uh, spine at risk signs risk posterior retropulsion a line um, just like just uh, which i have drawn in the uh, k angle uh, the line posterior um, po along the posterior uh, margin of the vertebra normal vertebra above and along the posterior margin of the normal vertebra below if any part of the disease vertebra is posterior to that uh, 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 junction of the these two lines then it is there is posterior retropulsion fourth is lateral translation if i draw a vertical line from the uh, uh, from the pedicle of the first lower normal vertebra then if the uh, first the pedicle of the first upper normal vertebra uh, is uh, the, if the line passes in between the pedicles of the first upper normal vertebra that's in this case then the, there is lateral translation and fourth spine at risk sign or toppling sign if there is a a line drawn uh, in the anterior border uh, along the anterior border of the lower normal vertebra if that line go, when goes above touches the inferior surface it is touching that inferior surface of the first upper normal vertebra then there is toppling sign so these are the these four signs then why we will uh, know why we will need to know this spinal risk signs because if any of the sign is present in a pediatric or um, uh, immature spine with spinal tuberculosis then there is high chance of high grade kyphosis that is more than 60 degree later on after healing so you have to uh, um, prevent that kyphosis to happen so you have to do surgery in those cases now healing stage healing stage x ray x ray with healing stage may show sclerosis may show fusion signs of fusion or may show calcification in the cold abscess so x ray can be used for assessment of the response to treatment as well as to detect the progressive kyphosis now after x ray we uh, have to discuss the higher investigations like ct scan in each and every patient you don't need to uh, get a ct scan but it, it is um, when in doubtful cases or when you suspect instability then you may get a ct scan it is superior to plain x ray it shows bone changes earlier than x ray there are thin sliced spiral ct scan which can detect scortical break very early before uh, the x ray can um, x ray detect those scortical break and it can assess the condition of the posterior element of spine uh, when the x ray fails to detect uh, like pedicle facet lamina spinous processes but remember there is high chance of radiation exposure in ct scan and uh, you can uh, enhance the ct scan Uh, with contrast study and with ct myelogram uh, previously we did myelogram when mri was not available say for instance 30 or 40 years back but now myelogram has plain myelogram is become has become obsolete but ct myelogram is sometimes done um, in cases where the mri study is needed but it is contraindicated i'll come to this later on so the advantage of ct scan is it can detect the lesion very early it is uh, uh, it can detect the lesion in rare and diff rare cases and in difficult areas and it helps in insertion of the needle for pathological inve investigation which we have already discussed that is very important now uh, the 
MRI, very common investigation and uh, the very useful investigations uh, in spinal uh, tuberculosis is MRI. After X-ray, uh, most almost all cases uh, we we suggest MRI. It is extremely useful in early stages, especially the three to uh, within three to four week, uh, six weeks. TB spine with neurological involvement, you must get an MRI done uh, unless it is um, completely contraindicated. And in difficult for the difficult areas like craniovertebral junction. The cervical thoracic junction, that means C7 T1 junction, posterior element, and in case of SI joint, sacroiliac joint. There are different modes of MRI. You have to identify what are the modes, so at, at least uh, uh, first two common modes that is T1 weighted image, then T2 weighted image. There are other modes like STIR, um, short tau inverse, inverse and recovery, you know, and fat suppression images. Uh, and sometimes uh, contrast enhanced, like with gadolinium, is required for, uh, for the MRI. So, how do we detect? At least in, in uh, viva table, you must have to detect the what is a T1 weighted image and uh, how how the T2 weighted image looks like. So you have to, if MRI is given, an MRI plate is given. Uh, I'll show you. If MRI plate is given, then you have to uh, uh, look for look at the sagittal image first to detect whether it is T1 or T2. Sagittal image. In sagittal image, there is a shadow of the cerebrospinal fluid or spinal cord. So cerebral cerebrospinal fluid is fluid. So in T1 weighted image, fluid is uh, um, it looks black color or grayish black color, and in T2 weighted image fluid looks whiter or bright color. So by these two uh, method, looking at the CSF or at the spinal canal, you can detect whether it is a T1 weighted image or T2 weighted image. But rest of the images, you know, need not, uh, um, uh, at the early stage, you need not detect, but there are uh, uh, different sections in MRI, like sagittal section, axial section, and coronal section. So in this case, see, uh, there are four images. Image A, image A, uh, in image A, left hand side, upper, upper left hand side. So image A, there is uh, the uh, look, look at the C, uh, uh, spinal canal and the CSF space. It uh, either it looks black or uh, grayish black. So it is. Uh, what is the uh, mode of the image? It is T1, and uh, at this area, it is five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. D12, 11, 10, 9, 8. At D7, D8 area, there is destruction. In other vertebra, you see the vertebral body. In Even in the T1 uh, weighted image, uh, the vertebral bodies are uh, grayish white. But in the diseased area, see, it is almost grayish black. So it's, there, is, uh, there is fluid in this uh, vertebral body. There is pass and there is destruction. And see, in these people, uh, right hand side picture the the pass is pressing on the spinal cord this is the spinal cord this pass is pressing similarly and the uh, picture b the upper right hand side the look at the csf space it is white it is bright white so it is a t2 weighted image and see at this uh, this is vertebra say there is de destruction of the vertebra above and destruction of the vertebra below this is 5 4 3 2 1 d12 d11 D10, D9, D8, D7. So D7, D6, D7. This is a D6, D7 destruction. No. Now, uh, image C. It is the coronal. These are the A and B are the sagittal sections, and C and D are the coronal section. So the, uh, look at the image C. The CSF space and the, there is destruction. Um, uh, destroyed vertebral body space are not bright. So it is T1 weighted axial image. And in the image D, the C, the CSF space is bright, and also uh, the destroyed vertebral body. This is the anterior part, the destroyed vertebral body. The, so this is the destroyed vertebral body, and the uh, pass looks uh, and the pass at the within the destroyed vertebral body, it looks brighter uh, compared to the C image. So it is a T2 weighted axial image, and you can uh, always uh, appreciate this is the. Uh, the round shaped bright structure outside the vertebral body anteriorly and left anterolaterally at the left side. So this is the aorta. Now you can assess uh, or we can see the different types of abscess in, uh, um, in, uh, in MRI with um, correct margin, proper margin. So uh, 
the left, uh, in, in a picture uh, shown by the uh, yellow arrow see this is the vertebra this is this is a spinal column d6 d7 d8 d9 d10 is involved then uh, um, d11 and d12 they are, these are normal vertebra so the the uh, uh, bright structure this is t1 uh, t2 weighted image this is left hand side is a t1 weighted image and the middle is a t2 weighted image if there is t if it is a t2 weighted image then uh, it is the the csf is bright so the anterior structure anterior to the vert destroyed vertebral body that means uh, d9 d10 vertebral body there is a white in the structure this is abnormal and it is lifting a black structure it is the anterior longitudinal ligament so this is abscess and this abscess is going anteriorly so this is an pre vertebral abscess and there is another abscess which is going towards the spinal canal shown by the red arrow that is called the epidural abscess it is compressing the spinal cord and it is causing the neurological deficit and the picture at the right, uh, most uh, right hand side it is a str image okay these are the uh, some other um, uh, mri scans and you can see see the axial image right at the right hand side top and the bottom there are uh, um, big bright structure destroyed uh, away from the vertebral destroyed vertebral body the, these are the para vertebral abscess okay now you can get a, a mri scan of the cervical spine there is a um, there is a epidural abscess there is an epidural abscess compressing the spinal cord as well as there is a abscess at the disc space so there is a disc discitis is a c5 vertebral body c6 c7 so c6 between the c6 c7 vertebral body the disc space is inv invaded by a bright shadow so there is discitis spondylo discitis sometimes mri scan can identify uh, an unusual thing that is uh, in the within the spinal cord even if there is no disease in the vertebral column or bone you, you can get a disease a, a, an abnormality like the lesion like this this is an intradural granuloma so mri can detect intradural granuloma that is also advantage of mri the early detection of marrow changes these are the advantages of mri detect the subligamentous extension of the inflammatory changes very early fat suppressed gadolinium enhanced image can delineate intraosseous paravertebral and epidural abscess very important that is not visible in x-ray no radiation exposure is possible in mri so that is one of the major advantage of mri scan and mri is available even in the districts uh, and uh, the mri with gadolinium enhancement is sometimes used um to detect pass from the uh, granulation extradural granuloma intradural tuberculoma syringe formation myelitis and myelo uh, malacia in case of tb spine cases now there are certain contraindications of mri also uh, if there the patient has uh, aneurysmal clip or um, the spinal implant pedicle screw which is made of uh, ferro alloy like stainless steel screws so in those cases mri cannot be done because it uses magnet then if the patient has claustrophobia if the patient has pacemaker if uh, there is mri compatible prosthetic heart valves then mri are con uh, mri is contraindicated and sometimes if you intend to do an contrast analysis mri and the patient has contrast allergy you, you better avoid uh, to doing contrast study now usg usg has very limited role in spinal tuberculosis it is helpful but uh, some role it is helpful in visualizing the paravertebral soft tissue abscess sometimes if you don't have mri uh, uh, it is used to guide needle insertion for drainage procedures like big uh, cold abscess which is deep seated uh, or paravertebral abscess uh, but it cannot visualize bony lesions and it is very limited role i have already told you there are some other other images like functional imaging like uh, spect scan single positron ms emission computer tomography and nowadays there are, there are scans imaging uh, with radioactive isotope with uh, 3d study called fdg pet scan it is used for um, uh, detecting the uh, level uh, the site of the disease as well as uh, detecting uh, any uh, residual disease and um, uh, response to treatment so in this case uh, there are different radioactive materials uh, isotopes are used like titanium technetium gallium uh, gallium indium etc now after investigation you have uh, you've already come to a final diagnosis and then you utter the word you should utter the word treatment not before that you are before completing almost all the uh, investigations you should start 
uh, you should not start treatment. So, uh, what is the treatment of tuberculosis spine? The tuberculosis spine treatment can be divided into two era before the advent of antitubercular drugs because antitubercular drugs are uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, uh, um, antitubercular chemotherapy, but uh, these are only uh, invented um, during 1947 to 50, 50, 51. So before those that era, uh, the TB, TB spine patients were treated by ancient, some ancient drugs, distal surgery away from the area of pathology, like only abscess drainage, cold abscess, and rest. But after uh, advent of antitubercular uh, uh, chemotherapeutic drugs, post antitubercular era has started. And in this, we are in a post antitubercular drug era. So that um, the mode of treatment may be medical, may be surgical. Medical treatment by antitubercular chemotherapy, rest, bracing, and sometimes surgery. Why I will tell sometimes because tuberculosis spine, even uh, if uh, it has some neurological uh, complication. Uh, it is mostly a medical disease. It can still be treated uh, medically with antitubercular therapy, bracing and rest. And you have to assess the treatment. You can, you have to, you, you can, you, you can have to do, or you have to do surgery only in certain cases, only in competed, uh, com, uh, uh, complicated cases, I'll show you. So the uh, first treatment with antitubercular drugs. Mortality rate sharply declined with the introduction of antitubercular drugs. Uh, say for instance, in a, in a study by LB, uh, the mortality rate from 32% uh, um, uh, to uh, has come down to 0% uh, in case of fusion, patient, fused patients, surgically fused patients, uh, only with streptomycin. In, in 1947, there was only one drug, there was streptomycin. In various studies have shown that majority patients of spinal tuberculosis respond very well to medical treatment. So it, uh, uh, nowadays tuberculosis is termed as by the stalwarts who are working with the tuberculosis, it is a medical disease. But in uh, Constant series, uh, it, he, he shows that 96% cases were healed with antitubercular drug, but uh, uh, even with an ambulatory basis, but there is a but, but with large number of cases, uh, are complicated with deformity. So you have to prevent deformity and you have to identify which cases may go into big deformity and which cases will not go into deformity, which cases are unstable. So you have to fix it, which case uh, surgically or which is cases are not complicated, not unstable, stable cases can be ma managed ma medically with uh, uh, with rest and uh, bracing. So there are certain antitubic drugs. Uh, so uh, I will not discuss thoroughly antitubercular drugs because you will um, get ample scope in your other exams uh, on other um, uh, classes uh, about antitubercular drugs and you know better than me. The spinal tubercle only I, 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 I have to um, mention that spinal tuberculosis falls under the category one of WHO treatment category of tuberculosis. So you have to follow uh, at least um, uh, follow so sometimes WHO uh, treatment category, but we have, may have to deviate because T India is a TB endemic country and uh, WHO category of treatment may not work in all our patients. So WHO recommend, what is W, but you have to know the WHO recommendation. WHO recommends nine months of treatment for tuberculosis of bones and joints, even if it is category one, nine months of uh, treatment along with, uh, including two months of intensive phase with four, uh, four first line drugs but there are debates about it so i'll not go into this debate of this drug the first line antitubercular drugs are isoniazid rifampicin ethampidol pyrazinamide streptomycin you all know and in case of drug resistance we have to uh, take the help of second line of atd and usually we refer these cases to uh, or we take um, uh, help from our medical colleagues the, because this second line of drugs have many complication rates, uh, drug induced uh, or uh, side effects. So the second line of ATDs are full fluoroquinolones, injectable antitubercular drugs like canamycin, amikacin, captimycin, etc. And sometimes and other like ethionamide, um, uh, pass, cycloserin, etc. So then after ATD, antitubercular drugs comes bracing. So if, um, the, if you want to uh, prevent deformity, if there is no uh, inst or mild instability or no instability at all, then uh, bracing is a very important. 
in this case, this is cervical bracing. If there is cervical or cervical dorsal tuberculosis, the patient may be treated sometimes with antitubercular drug and good bracing. The left hand side, there is hello brace. It's a very rigid brace. The, there is very less movement or almost no movement if there is hello vest with a cast is used. So um, this is hello vest or this is somi brace, sterno occiputo mandibular immobilizer. And this is hard cervical collar. According to the patient, you have to recommend which brace is appropriate for whom. Now, uh, at uh, this, the thoracolumbar tuberculosis, for thoraco thoracolumbar tuberculosis, this type of braces are used. This is mostly recommended left hand side. It is lightweight and a rigid brace called uh, Boston type of brace, thoracolumbar brace. So, uh, and uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, give the uh, patient instruction how to use that. Now, uh, what the uh, um, examiner will uh, wait for that, the term surgery. Surgery is uh, one of the earliest proponent uh, of the surgery in Kerry spine was Percival Pot in nine, 1779, but that, that was ancient surgery. Now in the modern era, Hodgson and Stock uh, from Hong Kong, they have uh, done uh, quite a lot of lot TB spine cases, surgery in TB spine cases. They did almost all TB spine cases, a radical debridement with anterior strut graft with rib or uh, fibula. Uh, and along with, obviously, along with chemotherapy, because in 1960, chemotherapy is invented to prevent less deformity, to prevent deformity. There is less deformity in their series. There is early bony infusion in their series and early and better recovery from neural deficit. But it, later on, it is shown that chemotherapy in the MRC working party in UK, it is uh, seen that chemotherapy is highly effective in ambulatory spine and no advantage in initial bed rest in the hospital and uh, no application and no advantage in application plaster jacket. So uh, they, they, did, they treated all patients ambulatory with ATD causing deformity in many cases. So in India, Professor S.M. Thuli, he recommended and he has done a lot of work here, uh, on tuberculosis and he recommended in 1975, a middle path regime between Hodgson stocks um, radical debridement in all cases and MRCs uh, in other uh, other side, MRCs uh, uh, guidelines, uh, um, ambulatory antitubercular treatment. He did a middle or he recommended a middle path regime. He suggested operation only when medical treatment fails. So he started um, treatment, start treatment with medi uh, medical um, management, start medical management with antitubercular chemotherapy and rest bracing. And then if necessary, you do surgery. So we follow this middle path regime in uh, nowadays. So there are some indications of surgery where surgery is done. It is not done in all cases. So what are the indications of surgery? First, the neurodeficit, if, the, if there is neurodeficit, you don't need to jump into surgery in the right way. If the neurodeficit fails to respond in conservative therapy of at least three weeks, then you uh, do surgery. Posterior spinal lesion is very uh, difficult to treat with antitubercular drugs and very high chance of neurological deficit. Failure to respond in chemotherapy over three to six months in non-complicated cases. Obviously in complicated cases, you, you, need not, you should not wait for three to six months. If there is di doubtful diagnosis, you cannot get a um, proper um, histopathological or uh, culture diagnosis of tuberculosis. Uh, uh, so your diagnosis is doubtful. You, you are using ATD, but it is not responding. Then you can do surgery to, uh, at least to get sample and then uh, decompress and debride the uh, disease part. Neurological complication developed even with ATD. ATD you, you have started ATD, but uh, the, the muscle power from grade four uh, go, uh, is going into grade two or the previously before going uh, starting ATD, there was no sensory deficit, but now sensory deficit is uh, developing. So you have to do surgery in those cases because neurology is deteriorating. There are some cases of recurrence. So you have to do surgery in those cases. The inst if there is instability after healing, the uh, high grade instability after healing, especially in young patients, you have to do surgery, you have to fix that spine. If there is late onset paralysis with cord compression with hard bony ridge in healed tuberculosis, disease is healed, but there are complications, neurological complications. There are late onset paralysis. So you have to um, uh, 
correct that uh, um, um, compression, correct that deformity, and relieve the compression from the hard bony ridge. And in children with going growing spine, having signs of posterior instability, those are the signs. Spine at risk sign, four signs I have already told. So these four signs, spine at risk signs, are very important in ch uh, ch uh, children with spinal tuberculosis. Now, what we will achieve with surgery? We will drain the abscess that decompresses or uh, uh, minimizes the uh, necrotic dead tissue. Debridement of the sequestrated bone and disc, that is also um, uh, remove all the dead and necrotic tissue and increase the vascularity to the disease area. So the antitubercular drugs and the uh, immune cells get chance to go into the um, uh, disease area and work into the disease area to fight with the mycobacterium. Then another goal is decompression of the score, cord. If the uh, spinal cord, cord means spinal cord. If there is neurodeficit and neurodeficit is increasing, so you need to decompress to prevent paralysis. Um, uh, and uh, if there is instability in the signs of instability in the spine, especially in the uh, young patients, you have to stabilize their spine. In case of all adults also, if there is instability, you have to fix. And to prevent or correction of deformity. If you think that this patient, uh, with the, those indicators, spinal at risk signs, that uh, this patient may go into deformity uh, even after uh, uh, disease is healed, then you have to do a surgery to fix the spine and to prevent those deformity. First is drainage of pus. Nowadays, it is uh, not uh, encouraged. Only drainage uh, is done only the epidural abscess, in cases of epidural abscess, with neurodeficit without any bony lesion. Epidural abscess with neurodeficit, but no bony lesion. Then you can uh, uh, drain the pus um, uh, by only by, uh, only drain the pus by uh, either laminotomy or so. And abscess, which is extremely ext expen extensive, huge abscess, huge psoas abscess, causing discomfort to the patient. Then you have to drain the pus. Otherwise, uh, paravertebral abscess, you can drain it with costotransversectomy. If there is a large psoas abscess, you can drain through retroperitoneal approach. Now, debridement, which is uh, uh, even down, done nowadays, that is simple debridement, radical debridement with strut graft, the chance of healing is better than simple debridement uh, debri or debridement alone. Then radical debridement, decompression with fusion, Rab radical debri de debridement with decompression of the neural structures with fusion, with or without instrumentation. That we do in um, most of the cases which are uh, requiring surgery nowadays. Now, simple debridement has inferior result. So we, uh, um, in last century, when we have started doing radical debridement followed by bone graft. The radical debridement is done by uh, anterolateral decompression or so, and it is better than simple debridement. The fusion rate is better because we, our goal is to achieve fusion in the, uh, and um, heal the disease and achieve fusion so that deformity, uh, deformity um, not progressing or less, there is less chance of kyphosis if strat graft is used and it should be done in, only done in active disease. Then comes radical debridement plus decompression plus fusion without, without instrumentation. If you think, uh, if you, you can use instrumentation, it is the most modern treatment. It has the best result. It has earliest fusion and it corrects and prevents deformity as well, which is not prevented by the uh, debridement. Element. So the instrument, there are, that is the instrument, uh, we, uh, we, are, uh, we are talking about instrument in um, case of um, uh, infection. The examiner will ask you, if this, is a, if this is an infection, uh, you are talking metallic implant. So uh, usually we do not use implant in, in the setting of infection. So uh, examiner will ask, why we will use, use instrument? So you have to utter the word that mycobacterium tuberculosis does not form biofilm on metal. That is why in OGA in 1993, OGA in his landmark paper, you can search that paper in internet and you can see that is the, this paper showed that there is no added risk in instrumentation in even in active tuberculosis because mycobacterium tuberculosis that does not form biofilm. So um, there are a lot of other papers later on, there are other articles and uh, in the books, it is, um, uh, it is allowed the instrumentation is done, can be done. Now, how we'll do the surgery? So, before we will do go into the surgery, we should know the approaches. So in cervical spine tuberculosis, we usually we the disease is anterior most of the cases. So we'll do anterior approach that is called Smith and Robinson approach. It is very easy approach if you know that it may be transverse incision may be transverse or longitudinal oblique. 
it is uh, you can you have to go to the mid, there are some structures but um, um, vital structures but there are spaces in between the vital structures in the neck anterior to the neck so you can go in between the vital structures blunt dissection medial to the carotid sheath and in, you can if you uh, dissect the um, and carefully dissect and carefully retract the vital structures you are you are going without without um, any much bleeding you can you are going directly into the disease segment of the vertebral body and you can deal the abscess also very easily this is the mrs smith and robinson approach in the left, top left hand side picture you can uh, this is a this is a midline the dotted dotted line is a midline transverse line is a line of incision you can uh, uh, make a transverse incision if you if the disease sec, if uh, one or two vertebrae is involved if more than two vertebrae is involved you have to uh, make a longitudinal oblique incision like this so uh, you are uh, um, dissecting blunt with blunt dissection and special type of retractor you are uh, retracting those vital structures and going uh, including the carotid artery and esophagus going di directly into the prevertebral space then you uh, this this type of blunt dissection with your finger uh, and gauge piece you can go uh, do and retract very gently the vital structures and go directly into the vertebral body and then debride the vertebral body and then put bone graft in between the vertebral normal body above normal body below after removal of the uh, cartilaginous space so there is chance of fusion we our goal is fusion so you, you fill this cavity with a bone graft and then you may instrument it with like this plate and screw so this is the case and this is the uh, instrument looks like how it looks like now if if there is the tb in the cervical spine is in the craniovertebral junction you can uh, you have to debride posteriorly or anteriorly uh, either anteriorly in the transoral route or uh, posterior and stabilize anteriorly you cannot stabilize um, so it is uh, in the craniovertebral junction so you have to stabilize this even if debride it anteriorly from the transoral from the mouth you have to go again posteriorly and fix it posteriorly um, fix the occiput to the c1 c2 c3 uh say sorry c2 c3 c4 uh with this instrument like this implant like this this is these are the screws and these are this is the rod or plate now there are other junctional area like cervical thoracic junction you cannot go uh, um, uh, easily it's very difficult areas and posterior laterally if the if you want to go posterior laterally and then you have to um, make an extra cavity approach the picture is above the posteriorly there are after uh, decompression and bone grafting the posterior instrumentation was done uh, fixed fixed with post implant posteriorly and if you want to go anterior you have to take uh, either uh, an approach surgeon and if you uh, if you are new to the surgery uh, this type of surgery so uh, they do it uh, and uh, sternocubicular joint rese resection and or medial uh, sternotomy according to the case and they bright the vertebral body anteriorly and then put plate and then they under uh, their presence the uh, cardiothoracic ctv surgeons or uh, approach surgeons present you can uh, divide and fix it in the dorsal spine you can uh, go uh, uh, directly anteriorly anterolaterally or posteriorly the lesion remember in most of the cases lesion is anterior so if you want to go directly anteriorly you have to do anterior approach if you um, uh, Um, um, do conventional approach you are not well trained about anterior approach you can do anterolateral approach it is a, basically a posterior approach uh, and from back you are going into the uh, vertebral body and directly posterior approach just like uh, we are doing fixing the vertebral body in case of fixed fracture with pedicle screw uh, just like this we, we do decompression by laminectomy then decompression by uh, uh, of the vertebral body through the disease pedicle that is called transpedicular approach now anterior approach anterior lateral approach this is a conventional approach previously when we uh, 20 years or 30 years back this is the um, surgery which is most um, commonly practiced uh, there is no uh, approach surgeon help is needed because it is uh, um, from the back and it is safe area there is no vital or very minimum vital structures in the in the approach so uh, but uh, um, uh, it is a conventional surgery and there is uh, but there is less chance of complication um, surgery complication of this surgery you have to make either patient prone which is practiced by griffith or right lateral uh, which is practiced by professor tuli introduced by professor tuli so uh, <clears throat> in the right lateral position from the left hand side uh, um, this is the disease segment so uh, you have to follow this route and go into the uh, uh, 
uh, vertebral body and co doing costo transverse septum just going to the vertebral body when the vertebral body forms a, it is the apex or internal gibbous you <coughs> through this this is the internal gibbous and uh, through this route you, you you can remove the by after costo transverse septum you can divide and remove that in internal gibbous and the, the cord cord structure the falls back for <coughs> or falls anteriorly now transthoracic and anterior approach uh, you, you can go uh, directly into the disease part that is vertebral body uh, but it, it needs thoracotomy commonly thoracotomy is done through the left hand side because there is uh, aorta in the left hand side and uh, aorta can be uh, uh, dissected and safely more uh, than the ivc the beginners may need a ctvs surgeon or approach surgeon self the affected area um, deal directly there is better decompression compared to the anterolateral decompression because in anterolateral decompression you are going from the back and it, in this case in transthoracic you are going from the front all sequestrated bone disc granulation tissue pass can be removed by this um, uh, uh, method and you can see the cord pulsating and uh, dura is visible after decompression so in this case you have you are uh, making the patient uh, 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 lateral uh, usually right uh, lateral and then go uh, you you are um, if uh, in the upper vertebra you are going around the uh, scapula in the middle vertebra middle thoracic vertebra uh, uh, along the vertebral uh, along the rib which is overlying the vertebral body you have to uh, dissect them uh, through the muscles and then uh, you have to identify the rib which is for directly on the diseased vertebral body and you have to do uh, 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 do resection of this rib so it will give you space into uh, uh, for going into this so <clears throat> if you have to dissect the aorta anteriorly then segment tie the segmental vessels and this is the prevertebral fascia you have to um, put make an incision on the prevertebral fascia and then debride the vertebral body anteriorly if you cannot do the um, approach um, by yourself get a help from ctvs surgeon this is a picture and uh, after debridement the uh, spinal cord is visible see the white area at the tip of the hemostat this is the hemostat at the tip of the hemostat the spinal cord is visible and then so decompression is complete completed and this is the implant these are the implants so you can uh, uh, this is the case this is the x these are the x-rays you can uh, see the uh, amount of uh, paravertebral abscess all are decompressed and you can uh, after decompression you can put a metallic cage into the void space and then fix the vertebra above and vertebra below by pedicle screws uh, and rods. It is not through the pedicle, but directly into the vertebral body with uh, using staple, but the same screws. And finally, uh, in the thoracolum, thoracic and thoracolumbar spine, you can go directly posteriorly. Advantage is that you can uh, you, you can put pedicle screw and rod and fix the uh, spine very rigidly, uh, which is not possible anteriorly. Only two, two, three segments are fused. In this case, multiple segment you can fuse, but the you have to approach through the pedicle of the. Um, this is vertebra. You have to reset that pedicle. You have to do laminectomy above, lamin laminectomy below, and uh, la laminectomy of that level. Because previously, in previous era, when we are students, laminectomy was contraindicated in case of TB spine, was discouraged in case of TB spine. But because we, in those era, we did not fix the, we, we are not used to fix the, with uh, metallic implant. But nowadays, we fix it with pedicle screws. So laminectomy is not that contraindicated. So uh, in, if you do a posterior approach, you have to do laminectomy above, laminectomy below. And through the pedicle of the disease vertebra, you, you reset that pedicle and your vertebra is in front of you. You reset that vertebra and then uh, you fix uh, the spine with pedicle screws like this. This is a post-operative extra. Uh, if, you, if you think you can put a cage uh, uh, in between the upper vertebra and uh, lower vertebra from the back through the pedicle space. If you like, and uh, really, uh, in our country is very re um, um, recently introduced uh, minimal invasive or thoracoscopy uh, uh, surgery. You can uh, debride and even uh, put pedicle screws through the thoracoscopy um, instruments. It is a minimal invasive procedure. So anterior decompression is much better than anterolateral decompression shown by Kelly Willis in '65. So in dorsal lumbar junction also. Uh, the approach may be thoracolum, uh, thoracoabdominal. Uh, it is a transpleural approach, and also uh, through eleventh uh, or twelfth rib you can go. This is the um, position of the patient uh, on table, uh, operating table. In case of dorsal lumbar junction, you have to follow the eleventh or twelfth rib, and through the diaphragm you have to dissect that through the through the diaphragm the diff through different layers of diaphragm and go into the uh, diseased vertebra, either L one, L two, L three. 
so in lumbar uh, spine if there, there is a lumbar uh, tb in the lumbar spine then uh, it can be approached through anterior by retroperitoneal approach the same position is in the dorsal lumbar spine but um, uh, incision are different and um, also you can uh, nowadays you can go transpedicular approach you, in the lumbar spine easily so laminectomy it is generally discussed uh, if fixation this is a common question whether you do do laminectomy or not the examiner will ask laminectomy is generally discouraged if fixation is not done if you plan fixation then you can do laminectomy no harm only indicated in posterior disease with cord compression only laminectomy is indicated in in case of posterior disease uh, uh, with cord compression but anterior structures are normal and if laminectomy is done it usually it must be supplemented with 360 degree fusion and uh, with for fusion imp implant is not enough metal is not enough some people think that i am i am fixing the spine above spine below normal spine above my spine below it will fuse it will not fuse so you will do bone graft either previously excised rib which is in the anterior approach uh, which you have to excise the rib i have shown this excised rib may be used at graft but that quality of graft is not good so uh, people use as uh, used tricortical iliac crest graft uh, even uh, nowadays we used sometimes tricortical iliac crest graft um, and uh, it is sh it shows that fusion rays uh, rate is 62% with the rib uh, but with tricortical iliac crest graft it is increased to 94.5% sometimes vascularized fibula non vascularized fibula was also used um, uh, by hodgson stocks and other but it takes a long time to incorporate so grafting is um, uh, uh, should be used only instrumentation is not enough thank you and best wishes for your exam if you ha have any question you can ask thank you dr chinmay nath uh, for the presentation elaborate presentation so i think any of you uh, have any question they can ask chat box we have three questions one chinmay the uh, what is the earliest sign of uh, tuberculosis? It's a periarticular osteoporosis or something else? Gunjan Upadhyay has asked. Yeah, it is the uh, peri paradiscal. In case of spine, it is uh, the paradiscal osteoporosis. Osteo it, is, it should not be called osteoporosis because osteoporosis is a metabolic disease. It is osteopenia or Pinia. the same thing. But osteopenia or the localized uh, localized osteopenia or rarefaction of the uh, paradiscal area of the vertebral body. This is the earliest sign. Then the reduction of disc space will happen when there is the, the periphery of the disc is started to disintegrate. Then uh, um, the um, the disc space will be reduced. And what is the ATT protocol you follow in your clinical practice? I follow to, uh, 12, I, I follow, uh, I, I cannot follow, I do not follow the WHO protocol, uh, but uh, I, I follow, if you um, ask me, I follow uh, at least uh, 12 to 18 months, sometimes 18 months of antituberculosis. Mm -hmm. In most of the cases, uh, I think uh, osteotubular tuberculosis, orthopedic surgeons follow this protocol, but this is not written in WHO pro um, protocol. So, um, uh, examine examinee should know what is the actual the WHO protocol. Then uh, this discussion and uh, they they can tell that uh, in our um, hospital we have seen our uh, um, professors or our unit heads uh, treat these patients like this. Into a, whatever. The last question on uh, YouTube chat box: What are the criteria of stopping the ATT? When do you think that you will stop this ATT antitubercular clot? Uh, what is the criteria for stopping ATD in, uh, in uh, spinal tuberculosis? You have to sh be sure that your infection is controlled. How you can be sure? By different investigations. First, you have to do laboratory, such as laboratory investigations like uh, ESR. ESR will fall to normal. CRP, that will fall to normal. And then uh, you, you should not be satisfied only with C yeah, ESR and CRP. You have to uh, get the imaging study also. You have to um, get an X-ray, see if there is complete fusion in a good quality X-ray, and you have uh, nowadays MRI is available in in all areas. If you have doubt, then you uh, get an MRI done uh, if necessary with uh, contrast. And if there is the, all the uh, necros part, necros tissue, pass, everything disappeared, and there is bone edema disappeared, only there is uh, see, uh, abnormality uh, is the fusion. 
if the vertebral body is seen uh, fused beyond doubt then you or it is fusing and all the laboratory investigations are um, came back to normal then you can uh, stop atd if, you, if according to the your time protocol it's clinical radiological and hematological we should exactly. consider all these three parameters thank you chinmayda for excellent talk i think uh, somodip that was the last talk Yes. We'll end this session. Sarananda is there, so we yes, can yes, have two talk talks from Sarananda, and we'll end the session. Yeah. No, no. I, th I think, I think this was an extensive uh, session. All uh, things probably have been discussed in the spine, in most elaborately, and Chinmay uh, and Kiran. They have taken real, really. They have uh, discussed the spine part. I think no question. You know, whoever has listened to the spine session, I think all the questions they can answer now. Okay, and all the heap cases also they were there. The presentation was very good, and uh, the all the senior faculties like Billy Mojumda sir, uh, then uh, other other guys and the the the, the, the people like you, Rajiv, uh, Shomodi, then Ornob, and uh, uh, Shatra, and uh, lastly Shomodi. Shomodi, we have taken lastly every day you are messaging and texting everybody <laughs> how, to, how the program how the program should go smoothly. And our last uh, extreme silent person is Ornob, who is basically uh, seeing everything that the all the take purpose goes very very yes, smoothly. Yes. So special thanks to the whole team of WBA and the Parto and the president and the, also the our immediate past president. Thank you everybody. Somodip, you can announce for the next meeting when it, what is yeah, the timing. Tomorrow and... we have the, uh, also some cases. We have nine cases tomorrow. The mostly the short cases. We will start at six pm tomorrow. Short. The those who want the YouTube link will be available. Those who want to not get the YouTube link or the Zoom link for tomorrow, uh, please um, send me a message in my WhatsApp. I will forward them. Otherwise, you will see can in the YouTube WB YouTube channel or you can join us at tomorrow at 6 p.m. For then, thank you everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Bye thank bye you bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye. Bye. End call.